Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to your Kutztown University Golden Bears football. I am Connor High. And I'm Kevin Groob. And we are playing California University of Pennsylvania. Here today is Vulcan football on your radio voice of Kutztown University, KUR, Kutztown, KUR. <laughs> our second game of the season. I'm very excited. Very excited. This is our first game of the season. True. This is their second game of the season. Last week, Kutztown played Assumption, number 17 ranked Assumption, and came away, came away with a win, 32-28. to 28. But it was a close one. They, they left it for the end there. Left they it for the end. Got off to a really good start. But in the middle the middle part, not not so good. Giving up uh, how many points in a row? Probably like 24. And yeah, then, 24. Uh, eventually able to pull it off with a game ceiling touchdown. All right, so we've got some keys for today's game. Uh, we were saying earlier, um, Kutztown was able to get to the quarterback against Assumption last week seven times. Meanwhile... California University of Pennsylvania did not allow a single sack. So, a big key to today's game is whether or not Kutztown can get pressure on the quarterback. Yeah, I would say that's actually number one. Uh, when Kutztown excels at one thing and California excels at the other thing and their converse is, mm-hmm. whichever team wins out, I feel like, is a, is a big key. Um, another big key to today's game is if Kutztown can get the run game established, uh, running back Craig Reynolds needs only 66 yards to get 2,000 for his career. A very impressive stat. We've got a couple uh, record watches that we're going to be looking at for the rest of the game. One of them is career breakups, pass breakups by Cox Cohen. He's right now tied for fifth with 25. So he's one away from getting tied for fourth. So we'll be on the lookout for that one to start off the game. Yep, that's going to be a big key to look out for. Uh, what are some stats that you got going here for Kutztown? <laughs> um, well, I'll keep going on with the, with the potential records and the potential uh, achievements. So we've got Colin DeGalbo could get into 10th place for pass attempts if he gets to at least 11 more, which seems very probable for this game. Uh, Last game, there were five more rushes than passes, but I I still feel like um, (laughs) there should be at least 14. Um, I'd say another another thing to watch for this game is senior running back Reynolds had a very good game last game versus Assumption and was actually named uh, PSAC East Offensive Player of the Week. Yep, 15 attempts, 107 yards rushing, two touchdowns. Average 7.1 yards per carry there. Press the feet for him. So we'll see if we can get another 100-yard game from him. Yeah, as a whole, offensively, Kutztown was pretty good last week. Uh, look at Connor Sullivan, seven receptions, 133 yards. That's a 19 average. Mason El- uh, McElroy, four receptions, 18 yards. Um, you know, we mentioned Reynolds earlier. Very strong showing for them uh, in, in the offensive game. For sure. Give up 28 points. Defensively, they're going to definitely look to, to tie that up, clean up some defensive gaps there. We've got the statistical comparison between Kutztown and Cal U. And it's looking like, to me, at least for um, the first game, the first couple games uh, of last year also, that Kutztown has the edge. Uh, but I guess that kind of happens when Kutztown finishes on a big streak last year and then also starts out with the win this year, yep. whereas California had that, that lot last week. Uh, but just the statistical comparison, Kutztown had 32 points on average, while Cal U just has 23. Um, rushing yards, Kutztown also in the lead with 158 versus 135. Oh, and also last game, Cal U had lots of passing attempts and also lots of lots of passing yards. They broke 300, I believe, yep. in their last game, and they still lost. So a uh, big key for them, again, will be on their defense, making sure that they can stop plays for the other team because they were able to get the passing game going last game, but it wasn't enough anyway. 
Uh, but that also goes back to the pressure on the quarterback. If right. Chris Town's able to disrupt California and what they're doing, that was pretty much the only thing California was able to do last game. So if Chris Town can get a couple sacks in, especially early, and rattle the quarterback, it could be a long game. Yeah, both teams are kind of running uh, hot hands right now. Um, so in their la- we have Chris Town enter Saturday's game 16-4 and four in its last 20 games. That's tied for second best in the PSEC with Shippensburg and only trailing IUP, who is 18-2. and two. Uh, California, on the other hand, is 15-5 and five in its last 20 games. So right there, close by. That's a pretty good record there for the last 20 games for both teams. So that one game last week was the difference between those two. Uh, also, Kutztown is 1-0 and for the first time since 2012, <laughs> and they have not been 2-0 since 2011, where it was the PSAC Championship. Golden Bears come onto the field here. Still have about eight minutes left till kickoff. I'm excited. This is going to be a fun game. I'm excited too. A uh, little, little nervous. Little butterflies in the stomach. I feel like probably the same for a bunch of the players. Oh yeah, definitely. It's going to be a fun day. Everybody's going to have a fun day. We're going to get to watch some Kutztown Golden Bears football. So, what can we kind of expect from Connor DeGalbo? I know when we we been watching a little bit of film on him. Uh, he's he's a quarterback that has the ability to take off and run. Yeah. Um, yeah, we watched uh, their game versus Assumption last year, uh, this week. And uh, as a reminder, he's a redshirt junior. Redshirt La- junior. Last year he was the starting quarterback, too. And we watched the game versus Assumption, and we saw lots of RPOs, run pass options. And it seemed like the gavel really wanted to take it by himself, put the game into his hands. Uh, but last year it, it didn't look like it was working for him too well. So we'll see that extra year difference, if he's maybe more a little pass happy. Uh, getting it into the hands of his other capable players like Reynolds, uh, the senior, and very good running back. Uh, or we'll see if there's more RPOs and see how much faith he has in the, in the rest of his team. I guess whatever they did uh, last game worked out. I mean, he's definitely more than capable of getting it done with the long ball, too. Uh, through for, oh, we have the national anthem. Okay, so that was the national anthem there. Um, so like we were saying before, Colin DeGalbo uh, was 18 for 27 last week, 298 yards and a touchdown. His longest was 52 yards. Um, pretty good passing performance for him. And I definitely have a good description for DeGalbo as dual threat quarterback. Definitely, definitely dual threat quarterback. Him. Oh, yeah. He has four school rushing records as a quarterback. Touchdowns in the game at three, touchdowns in the season at eight, uh, longest run at 82. I'd love to see another long, long rush from him this game, and most rushing yards in the game at 126. Uh, and he's he's really close uh, to breaking the Kutztown quarterback rushing record. He is on pace to hit a thousand yards in his career. Uh, obviously, still two years left, so we'll uh, we'll be on the lookout for that. Yeah, definitely something we'll be paying attention to today. We're about five minutes till kickoff. Are you ready? I think so. Well, still, still five minutes. Still, still, <laughs> still five more minutes. to talk about. Still more to talk about. I'm just excited. <laughs> I'm really excited. Um, but we really can't overstate how important the Galbo is to this team. He's a... Where'd it go? <laughs> um, 
Oh, boy. I had a note ready, and I can't find it now. Oh, boy. Is that, right. is that the one? Three years starting. Okay. Here, this is why we uh, first game. It's going well. That's so fine. Far. First game, Jim. <laughs> no worries. No worries. He's a three year starting and all PSAC quarterback. He's played 21 games, and he is 13 and 4. That doesn't add up. 13 and 4, that's only 17 games. Maybe, yeah, okay, as, as a starting quarterback, 13 and 4, and he's played 21 games total. Right. That makes more sense. Um. Like we said, he's very close to passing a lot of records, especially for rushing as the dual threat quarterback. And again, like we said when we were watching the film on him, it definitely seemed like he'd like to favor his legs over his over his arms. I, I've seen that more as a, a trend in college football, especially the dual threat quarterback. Um, lots more rushing and RPOs over long passing yardage. Right, definitely creates the, uh, the more versatility in the run game. Kind of sets up the uh, you know the option a little bit more, and uh, we'll see we'll see about California too. In their last game, they had four 20-plus yard plays in general, which seems like not that many, especially for how many passing yards that they had overall. Uh, four is pretty low, so maybe we'll see more RPOs from them as well, or maybe short checkdowns. Um, that was another thing that we saw when we were studying um, and watching the game from last year that. Which, which was against assumption. We saw lots of quick slants to the right and to the left, yep. and Kutztown wasn't able to defend it very well. So we'll see if that's still a problem this year, and we'll see, again, if California wants to try that out. Kutztown plays a lot of, lot of off-ball coverage, um, a lot of zone coverage. They don't play up on the line, their cornerbacks. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how California kind of takes advantage of that. Because we've seen in recent weeks uh, how teams do kind of run that quick out route, and you know it's just constant five yards, five yards, five yards, uh, and uh, teams will take that all day, every day. I've got a, another worrying stat for you. Oh, okay. About, Let's hear it. About flags. Who oh, do you boy. Th- <laughs> oh who, boy. Who do you think had the most penalty yardage in the PSAC last year? Well. Uh, I'm going to take a guess at Kutztown. It was a good educated guess. I led that one on. It was Kutztown had okay. the most penalty yardage <laughs> per game last year at 86.7. And I know I know you watched the Eagles game. Oh, yeah. Uh, on I Thursday. I certainly saw my fair share of flags. And that, that was a flag party. Oh, coin toss. This happened right before our eyes. All right, so California won the toss. They will be kicking. Yep, Kutztown will be receiving. So we have our officials for today, referee Justin Ackley, umpire Charles Johnson, head linesman Francisco Johnson Jr., line judge Greg Shambaugh, field judge Keith Salowski, side judge Marvin McDowdy, and back judge Corey Hansen. So you're saying about the penalties, I figured it would be good to throw in the refs now. Uh, I agree. So we might be hearing a lot of Justin Ackley here today. <laughs> I hope not. I hope not. I hope we have a, a good, clean game, uh, evenly matched. So they kind of let the guys play a little bit. We'll see. We'll see. What's your over-under for total flags in the game? Over-under? Wow. All right. Um, if I take a guess, I mean, uh, let, let, let's let's say uh, eight and a half. I would say... I'm going to say over. You're going to say over? All right. We, can, we are just about ready for kickoff here. Teams have taken their spots on the field. Craig Reynolds is back deep in the end zone. Get ready, ladies and gentlemen. We've got Kutztown University Golden Bears football here on the radio voice of Kutztown University. KUR just about ready to get going here. I would say there's a pretty good crowd here for opening. Yeah, we got a home pretty game. packed stadium, yeah. For places that seats about 5,000 here at Andre Reed Stadium, it's pretty full here today. We've got Avalanche All right. and some music pumping the crowd up. Brian also Brooks it will be kicking away. Craig Reynolds will be returning. And with that, the game is underway. Fielded at about the 5. He's at the 10, the 15, the 20, and tackled at about the 20-yard line. Fielded by Craig Reynolds. Reynolds. Good start so far. Kutztown will be setting up at about the 20-yard line. 
So we'll get our first look here at the Kutztown University Golden Bears offense. I want to go back to that kick return real quick. It looked like Reynolds would have had a little bit of room if he was able to get closer up to his blockers. It looks like they were creating some space for him, but uh, the Vulcan's able to penetrate a little bit off to the side and get the tackle on the 20. Pretty good been, coverage there yeah. by California. So you have the Galbo in shotgun. He's got Reynolds to his right, three receivers to the uh, far side. Play action. He's back. Sets up a screen. There goes Reynolds at 25 to 30. 35. And out of bounds at about the 40. First down, Golden Bears. And that's a great way to open up the offensive drive. Get a quick first down. Again, maybe a little bit of jitters playing for the first time here at Kutztown uh, for both teams and having a good, good you, game on the first you in the hurry-up offense. The Galbo hand off to Reynolds. Reynolds tackles forward. Picks up about four on the play. Set up about second and six. Pretty good job there by the Kutztown University Golden Bears offense. Get a solid run there on first down. Sets up second and seven. So DeGalbo in shotgun. Reynolds to his right. Two receivers to the top. Man in motion. And off to Reynolds. Reynolds at the 45 Ooh, to the 50. Yeah, so about the 45 in California territory. That'll be first down, cuts down. Reynolds already making his mark on the game with that kick return and two good runs. Reynolds subs out for Abdul Hassan Nablet. Nablet to the right. Got 87, Ryan Hubley in motion. Ball snap. Throw is over to Hubley. Hubley. Whoa. Breaks the tackle over to the 40 and tackled at about the 37 yard line instead of second and short. It looks like we might have an injury on the play, too. We'll have a timeout injury on the play over on the far side. For the Vulcans. Yep, for California. He tried to make an athletic play on the, on the tackle and flew all the way over. Um, must have landed poorly. It's a great job of breaking the tackle there by Ryan Hubley, the wide receiver. All right, we're going to take a quick break here for injury timeout here on the radio voice of Kutztown University, KUR. University's very own mascot is available to appear at your event. Whether it's a birthday party, grand opening, or town parade, inviting Avalanche will add in extra fun and entertainment for people of all ages. Also, kids can join Avalanche's Golden Bear Cub Club, which allows them to become junior members of the KU team. Make everyone's experience golden by visiting kutztown.edu slash avalanche. Once again, that's kutztown.edu slash avalanche. You're listening to the radio voice of Kutztown University, K-U-R. Did you miss a show? Want to hear your favorite shows on your time? Check out our Mixcloud page where you can hear select programming on your schedule. Mixcloud is a digital audio streaming platform service rethinking radio. Just go to mixcloud.com forward slash KU radio and click on the show that you want to hear. KUR, the radio voice of Kutztown University. Man in motion. He's got Reynolds to his right. Play action. Over to 23, 40, 35, 30. First down. Cuts down. Tackled at about the 30-yard line. And it looked like that was just a mirrored play of the last one they did. And able to, able to get good yardage on both. Catch was made there by Josh Lee. That'll be a cuts down first down at about the 29-yard line. The Galbo in shotgun. He's got Reynolds to his left, and he's got the Blett to his right. Defense looks confused. Two receivers to the far side, one to the near side. A little bit of an audible here for Kutztown. Well, I would have liked to see a quick snap there. It looked like yeah, defense did. California wasn't ready. Yep. Ball snapped. Hand off to Reynolds. Reynolds. He's at the 25, the 20, the 15, the 10, the 5. <laughs> Touchdown, Golden Bears. Shows how much I know. <laughs> Touchdown, Craig Reynolds. Great drive there by the KU Golden Bears. 12.34 on the clock. They put up six. No Great one. way to establish the run here. That was a really good opening drive. No incompletions. Every play getting yards. And here we got the, the point after attempt to put it up 7-0, potentially. 
So they'll come out, Alec Rosenfield, for the extra point. Ball is snapped. Good spot, good hold. The kick is away, and the kick is good. 7 nothing. cuts down here in the first quarter. 12-34 left in the game. Great opening drive there. That was really by impressive. KU. Yep, All the way very around. nice of job. Good omen to start the game. We'll see how their defense does, though. Very good start. First drive for the offense. Reynolds was dominant there. Great job. All sorts of creativity there on the offensive side for, there for Kutztown. And they, they spread it around. Reynolds, of course, got it a couple times, but between passing and rushing, and I think quite a few players got the ball on that one. Yep, we saw plays there from Reynolds. saw plays from Hubley. We saw plays from Lee. Galvo making it work with his arm. Great job all around there by the KU offense. Now we get to take a quick look at the KU defense. How do you feel about deferring the first kick? Because I remember back in the old days, back in the old days, when I was watching football, they would always elect to receive the first time. But now I think in recent years, like past three, four years, it started to be a defer. It's all about the strategy. It's all about the strategy. So we're going to have Alec Rosenfeld kicking away here on the kickoff. And we'll have Jalen Bell returning. We'll get a good look at Bell here for the first time. And kick it away. Bell will get it at about the 10. He's at the 15, the 20, at the 25, and brought down at about the 27. So good field position here for California. So we'll get a quick look at their quarterback, Noah Mitchell. And that was good work on that kick return. He was surrounded pretty quickly, but he just kept his legs moving, got an extra three, four yards, setting him up on the 25-yard line. Better field position than what Kutztown started with. Yeah, pretty good job there on the return. So we'll have Mitchell in shotgun. He's got running back Nelson Brown to his left. Handoff goes to Nelson. Nelson makes a man miss over to the 30, and he's wrapped up at about the 32-yard line. Nelson Brown with a pickup of about pickup of about five. Good job there on the run there. Yeah, that was a solid first down, um, making it second and third and manageable. Um, that was a good tackle at the end there too. Just stopped him in his tracks. So I'll set up second and four here for California. Nelson to uh, Mitchell's left. Two receivers to the far side, one, two to the near side. And it's a quick throw over to Nelson. Nelson gets the first down, and he's over at the 40. That's where they'll mark him down. It'll be first down for California at the 40-yard line. Well, it looks like they're going to look to utilize Nelson so far. <laughs> yeah, leaning on their running back, too, just like Kutztown did. So a little bit of hurry-up offense here by both teams. Quick tempo seems to be the format today. So we'll have Mitchell in the pistol. Nelson, excuse me, Brown to his right. Hand off play action. Mitchell going deep down the far sideline. And it is oh. incomplete. Great coverage there. That's incomplete. By number 14, Nive Nivarez. Went right off of number 14 for California's hands. Looked like he might have been out of bounds anyway if he had brought that down. Yep, that's so Jordan that's Dandridge. Good opening play. So I've set up second and 10 for here for California. And we said in their last game they only had uh, four 20-plus yard plays. That would have been a good start for them. So Mitchell in the shotgun. The handoff goes to Brown, and Brown is wrapped up quick. Brown with carry. Pickup of about two. That'll set up third and eight at the 42-yard line in California territory. Good job there and contained there by the Kutztown defense. So set up third and eight here. Mitchell in shotgun. He's got Brown to his right. Two receivers to the far side, two to the near side. Kutztown looks to be in a 4-3. Ball snap. Mitchell fires over to the right side. 
And it is caught to the 40, 35, 30, and brought down Jordan Dandridge with the catch into Kutztown territory. And he got about an extra 10 yards on that play when Kutztown tried to tackle him up high by the helmet and just being able to slip out of that tackle and run off to the sideline. Yeah, nice play there on third and eight. Good play call. Kutztown in that zone coverage looked like. Looked like they were able to find a hole there. So Mitchell at the 30-yard line in shotgun. He's got Brown to his right. Handoff goes to Brown. Brown makes a couple people miss. And he's breaking a couple tackles over to the 25. Gets to about the 22-yard line. Good run there by Brown. Definitely looking like a battle of the running back. Both teams leaning on them heavily. It's a great rush. Nelson Brown's a pretty shifty guy, looks like. Throwing out the jukes every time. <laughs> Making a man miss almost every every rush. So that will set up second and two at the Kutztown 22-yard line. Mitchell in shotgun. Got two backs to his right. And throws goes over to 80. And it's caught at the 15-yard line. Number 80, that is Chad Livingston. That's going to be a first down, too. Set up a first down at about the 14-yard line. Gain of nine, first and ten for the Vulcan. Yep, they continue to drive. We've got 9.33 left on the clock now as California has entered the red zone. So Mitchell in shotgun. He's got Brown to his left. He's got two receivers to the far side, one to the near side. Handoff goes to play action. No, and it's incomplete. Not able to make a football-like move there to complete the completion. Throw in over to Jordan Dandridge. Dropping the ball at the end there, too. That was that would have been close for a touchdown. Could have just reached in. That's good coverage there on the part of uh, Navarez. So I'll set up second and ten on the 13-yard line. Got the crowd pumping very loud. So Mitchell in shotgun. Brown again to his left. Three receivers to the far side, one in motion. They got a trips to the left. They bring the screen over to Brown. Brown at the five-yard line, and he is brought down close to a first down. We'll set up about third and one. The three wide receivers off to the left there did a good job of creating space to allow that to happen. Get their running back. Again, more involved in the game. We'll see if Kutztown starts shutting him down, maybe keeping a man covered on him. So that'll set up third and one on the four-yard line for California. Kutztown looking for a big stop. Mitchell in the shotgun. Man in motion. Ball snap. And off to Nelson. Nelson's close to the first down. Ref looks like he's finding it short. Looks like it's short. They're going to mark it fourth down. Fourth down and about inches. Great job there by the Kutztown Golden Bears defense. And from the looks of it, they are going for it. I don't like that third down play. They got to spread it out more. Well, Nelson's had success. Nelson Brown's had success here on this first drive. So we have Mitchell in shotgun, man in motion. He's got Brown to behind him. Handoff goes to Brown, and he is into the end zone for the touchdown. Puts down so close there to getting the stop. Nelson Brown there on the carry. Finds his way into the end zone. Breaks a tackle. And we are an extra point away from this game being tied up. Just one play away there from uh, having the lead. 7-0. Not able to get it done. Brian also Brooks will come on for the extra point. The ball is snapped. Oh. Nope. <laughs> we have a penalty on the play. It looked like the snapper moved to me, but also could have just been because of encroachment. We'll have Justin Ackley on the call here. False start. Oh. Offense, number 27. Yep. False start on the Ball offense. Penalty. We play the side. It's a long snapper. Yep, long snapper there on the play. That is David Carney Jr. And these are not automatic, especially for college kickers. That could be big. 
Oh, so, this is still pretty short. Still pretty short. Uh, they'll be kicking from about the eight yard line now. So also Brooks lines it up. Ball is snapped. Kick is away, and the kick is good. So it's now 7-7. Cuts down, and California here with 7.57 left here in the first quarter. Take a quick break here on the radio voice of Kutztown University, KUR. Ray's Pizza De Sonio is the newest buzz on Main Street. Located at 478 West Main, Ray's has specialty Italian pinwheels, handmade mozzarella, and hot slices at the ready. To order your favorites, dial 484-648-2720. That's 484-648-2720. Or order online at raispizzadesogno.com. That's Ray's Pizza, D-A-S-O-G-N-O, dot com. Mention KU Radio for a special treat. In addition to the online home for Cookstown University Athletics, KUBears.com, there are several ways to follow the Golden Bears through social media. Find out about KU Athletics on Twitter by following at KU Golden Bears. Become a fan on Facebook by searching for and liking Cookstown University Athletics. Finally, check out how to sign up for email and mobile phone updates at KUBears.com. Stay in touch with the Cookstown Golden Bears. And it is off and will re- be received at about oh, the one yard line. Reynolds to the 5, the 10, the 15, and he's brought down it's around the 20 yard line. Down. Good coverage there on the part of the California cover team, kickoff team. Looks like a little extracurricular at the end there. 83 for Goodstown. Getting in the face. So that, will set up, California. that will set up first and 10 here for Kutztown. We get another look at the Golden Bears offense. 7.50 here left in the first quarter. One of our All keys tied up. at the beginning of the game was pressure on the quarterback. And in these first two drives, I really haven't seen any pressure to either quarterback. Neither team really has gotten any pressure. So DeGalbo in shotgun. He's got four receivers to the far side, one to the near side. And DeGalbo breaks the tackle. He's off to the 20, the 30, the 35, the 40, and brought down... At about the 42-yard line, almost a broken play there. Saw a great uh, pass rush there on the California part. The Galba recognizes it right away, takes off, gets a huge gain there for a first down. Looks like California University able to read the snap there and get off to an early start. Not blocked at all. Gets right onto the Galba, but again, he makes that quick play in his mind to to say to himself, "Oh, I got to run, run with this ball," and able to get. Good blocking up front. Get that first down. Degabo takes a snap. Handoff is to Reynolds. Reynolds picks up about three. We'll set up about second and seven. Not a bad play there on first down for the Golden Bears. Pick up of about three. Good time making some personnel changes here. I'm slowing it down, too. Slow it down a little bit. They've been both teams have been pretty quick on the tempo so far today. So DeGabo will be in shotgun. He's got Reynolds to his left. He's got the tight end Pilkerton to his right. Play action. DeGabo looking fires Ooh, big over to Reynolds. Yeah. Reynolds makes a catch and yeah, is brought down ball. at about the 44-yard line into California territory. He's going to set up a first down for touchdown. And DeGalbo took a shot there. DeGalbo did take a shot there. I don't know if he saw the man coming, but took a shot there, able to get the pass through. But he definitely seems okay. Yeah, California getting pretty good rush here on this drive. Send a uh, a few more blitzes here. They'll set up first down and 10 from the 44-yard line. DeGalbo in shotgun. Reynolds to his left. You've got Lee to the far side. I want to see him throw it to up top. the near side. Ball snaps. Handoff goes to Reynolds. Reynolds powers forward. And it's a pickup of about three. And we have a flag on the play. Looked like to me, could sound making an extra block there at the end. Unnecessary. We will await the call there from Ackley. So far, good job there by Reynolds. Down, 
All right, so Justin Ackley with the call. Yep, yep you're right. Off, on, unnecessary roughness on the offense. I hate to see that. Yeah, you really do. That's not a penalty that you want to see called. All right, Kutztown's got to show more discipline there. It's going to be a tight game here, as we've seen both teams have good offense. Uh, we're, it might come down to, to plays like that. Brings up a second and long. Second and long will be the Galvo in shotgun. He's got running back to his right. Three receivers to the near side. He ball snapped. He fires and is caught at the 45. Brought down at about the 42. Connor Sullivan on the play. It looks Number like 11. He, it looks like he used the ref there to get a little bit of separation from the guy covering him. Kind of stood there for a little bit, and uh, California University might have forgot about him. But wide open for that pass. It's a good play there on second and long there. Sets up third and eight, which is certainly a lot better than where they were at. Yeah. So Nate Jones has checked into the game at running back. He is to the Galbo's right. You have two receivers to the far side. Ball is snapped. The Galbo fires over to Lee, and Lee is brought down just short of the first down. Caught at about the 36-yard line. That was a strong tackle at the end there. Lee was. definitely was looking to get the first down and extend the play. but It's a good job there by Lee making the play. And it looks like Kutztown's going to go for it here on fourth down. Jones checks out Reynolds into the game. That second down was so key for field position setting this up. So, DeGalbo in shotgun. He's got Reynolds to his right and DeBlett to his left. Two receivers to the near side, one to the far side. And DeGalbo takes the snap. It's an option. Over to DeBlett. DeBlett trips and falls, and he's going to be well short. Yep. Yep. Yep, He's going to be well short of the first down and a little extracurricular activity going on there at the end of the play, and they're going to call a flag on it. That that play looked like it was going to go well. Unfortunately, stumbling on the play after he got the ball. Um, but Kutztown bailed out by not by a boneheaded move by someone on I think the Vulcan. You, I think you said it best, and that's bailed out. Um, so we'll see what the call is here. Oh, yeah, I've got to make sure that that's what it is. <laughs> but, yeah, opening up, that was an RPO again. Uh, DeGallo with the ball and closed down very quickly. Yep. Yep. And DeGallo laterals it to his left, and it looked like there was enough separation where he would have been able to pick up the first down. But unfortunately stumbled on the ground. But at the end there, a late tackle with – Quite a lot of force on it, too, and that was a big guy. So that, that couldn't have felt good, but maybe if you're getting a first down for your offense, you'll take anything. No, they're going to rule it. It was against Kutztown. Yeah, no, the Kutztown offense is off the field. The defense is in. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, all right, so they're going to call that against Kutztown. Our apologies. I'm very surprised by that. I, I, I didn't even for sure. It. Usually I'd wait for the ref to say it, but I was so sure after I saw that play. That's a questionable call for me. So Mitchell's in the shotgun. He's got Brown to his right. Ball snapped. Handoff goes to Brown. Brown gets to about the 24. Pick up about two. That's going to set up second and eight here for California. About four minutes left here in the first quarter now. Still 7-7, Kutztown and California all knotted up. And pretty back and forth so far. Pretty back and forth there, yep. Nobody with a clear advantage yet. So Mitchell in the pistol. Brown in motion to his left. Ball snap, play action, fires, and it is incomplete. Pass was intended for number 80, Chad Livingston. And he just threw it a little bit too far in front of him. Yep, let him a little too far on that play. Livingston not able to reach for it. It looked like it would have been a very marginal game. I was going to say, Kutztown looked like they had it pretty well covered up there. So that's going to set up third and eight now. California. You have Mitchell in shotgun. Brown to his left. 
Three receivers to the far side. Ball snapped. Mitchell looking. He's firing to the far side, and it is caught for the first down over at the 38-yard line. And we've still yet to see a punt. We've seen a couple of fourth down attempts and touchdowns and lots of first downs, but no punt. The catch was made there by number 10 Tyson Hill. The wide receiver sets up the first down for California. How many flags are we on so far? Three? About three, yeah. I think I'm going to win. <laughs> Sounds about right. All right, so we have Mitchell in the pistol. Handoff goes to Brown. We have a flag on the play. Brown to the 40, to the 35, the 50. And he is brought down at about the 47 in Kutztown territory. A pretty good run. We'll see if it comes back for any holding. Yep. I just saw the ref make the motion. Holding on the offense. That is against Brendan Bastenberg. That's got to hurt for the running back. You make a nice play on the ball. I mean, maybe the separation comes from the holding. Well, it definitely does. But you're feeling good at the end there, and you took a, a tackle out of bounds. Uh, and you're saying, yep, make, got the first down for my team. We're in good field position. Brought all the way back. Brought all the way back. So the ball will now be at the 28-yard line in California territory. So you have Mitchell in shotgun. Man in motion. Ball snapped, fires over to the far side, and it is caught by Livingston, and he is brought down right away. And I've still yet to see strong pressure onto the Vulcan quarterback by the Kutztown team, especially with the team with seven sacks last game. Uh, but it does seem like the Vulcans might have put that into their game plan. They're doing a lot of quick passes and a lot of runs. I've seen maybe two or three long passes so far. They're definitely keeping things short, that's for sure. So it'll be second down and 18 for the California offense. Brown has checked out of the game. It is Jalen Bell now into the game. Mitchell in shotgun. Takes the snap. He's looking. He fires to the far side and is caught by Tyson Hill. Close to close down to the initial marker. They'll set up about third and ten there. Pick up about eight. Kutztown brought a rush there, but not able to get to the quarterback. Good good stops by the offensive line. Able to get the ball away for a pass. California keeping the tempo up. Bell still in the game at running back. Mitchell in shotgun. Three receivers to the near side. Mitchell takes a snap. He's looking. He fires. And it is incomplete. Flag on the but play. They're going to get him on a flag on the play. It looked like pass interference there by number four, Hakeem Cox Cohen. It's been a lot of flags, especially recently. A lot of flags here early on. I think you're definitely right with that uh, over <laughs> under. Over 8.5. Yeah, I, I was, I was there being, already. being optimistic. I was being optimistic. I got it. First down. Ackley with the call. It is indeed pass interference. And that is going to give California the first down. But back to the flags. There's definitely nothing on the refs. I, I feel like oh, no, that, almost that, all, the all the flags have been. All the calls have been justified so far. That one unnecessary roughness that Correct. went against us. But I'm feeling a little iffy on it. All right, so Mitchell takes the snap. Hands off goes to Brown. Brown is going to power Brown. through. And it's a pickup of no gain. Second and ten on the Kutztown 47. California in Kutztown territory. So Mitchell in shotgun. He's got Brown to his right. A receiver to the far side, a receiver to the near side. Also have the tight end Dylan Stallings in front there. They get an audible. Five on the shot clock. Well, snap, play action. Mitchell going deep, and it is way over the head of number 14, Jordan Dandridge. They let the play clock run down all the way there. Yeah, for, we've been talking about tempo this entire game. That was uh, an instance where they were pretty close on the, the play clock. So set up third and 10 for California at the Kutztown 47-yard line. 
He threw into triple coverage there, too. He did, yeah. That was a ball that it was kind of one of those, you know, throw up and go get mm-hmm. over to Danridge. Uh, just couldn't quite get there. Throw led him a little too far. So, Mitchell in shotgun. He's got Brown to his left. Two receivers to the far side, two receivers to the near side. Mitchell takes the snap. He's looking. He fires, and it is caught. Oh. And picked up for the first down over to the 35-yard line. If you're the Kutztown defense player, you got to be aware of where the first down is. Yeah, Tyson Hill with the catch. Kutztown had the chance to make the, the play, give him third and short, or excuse me, fourth and short. Couldn't make the tackle. Bell picks up the first down. Excuse me, Hill picks up the first down. you got to realize that's the route that he's running. He's going to stop oh, yeah. right after the first down. But so Mitchell, to read it. in shotgun, Brown to his right. Ball snap, play action, and it is batted down at the line on the throw. Great job there. That will set up second and ten. Second and ten for the ball team. At the Kutztown 34-yard line. Some really good pressure there. Good pressure there. Finally, some pressure there by Kutztown. We haven't really seen a whole lot of pressure. And that was Cal trying to get rid of the ball quickly, too. Yeah. Still able to get up there and... and Kutztown was definitely blitzing there, that's for sure. That, that was the safety, so yeah. All right, so... seven sec- Excuse me, eight seconds left here in the first quarter. Mitchell in shotgun. Brown goes in motion to his right. Ball snapped. Mitchell looking, fires, and it is caught for the first down. He's at the 10, the 5, touchdown, California. Really unfortunate there. Chad Livingston with the catch. That was on double coverage. That was an excellent pass, though. And it looked like the two Kutztown players crashed into each other and uh, so made it so they couldn't get the tackle. Excellent coverage there by Kutztown. Better play by Livingston. That's a tough break for Kutztown. And then unable to wrap him up, Livingston breaks a tackle. That's with and one second left the in the quarter, too. One second left in the quarter. So also Brooks on for the extra point. Ball spotted. The kick is away, and the kick is also good. Kick is good. You're so strong. California You're takes the lead 14-7 to seven with one second left here in the first quarter. Again, that's a tough break for Kutztown. And had, they had a couple chances to stop them there on third, third and long on that drive, yeah. and California able to make some plays. And this is now new territory for Kutztown in this season. In their last game versus Assumption, they had the lead going out of the first quarter, out of the second quarter, and out of the third quarter, and obviously at the end. Yeah. But they never went out of a quarter with a loss or down by points. So here now down by seven, and a reminder, they're kicking off the ball to start in the second half. That is true. So this next drive could be key. That is true. California decided not to take the opening kick after winning the coin toss. We'll see if Reynolds can get a good kick return off this one. He's been stopped at about the 20 both times so far. Also, Brooks has got a pretty good leg, too. Able to kick it deep into Kutztown territory. And the ball falls off the tee, so we'll wait a second here before the kickoff. That's always fun. I'd like to see more pageantry on this kickoff. Like when, I know. We, were watching we, were, when we were watching game film, there was, there was a lot of pageantry, a lot of intimidation. It was fun. It was fun. But it's fine. This is good, too. Very straight nose <laughs> on this one. So Alterbrook kicks it away, and... It'll be taken at about the one-yard line again. He's at the 10, the 15, the 20. He finds some space. He's at the 30, and it'll be brought out of bounds at the 33-yard line. Some good acceleration there. It's a great job on the return there. Unfortunately, ran out of space going up to that end line. That was a bigger return. That was Nablet on the return. That's the end of the first quarter. That is the end of the first quarter, ladies and gentlemen. So, we're going to take a quick break here on the Radio Voice of Kutztown University, KUR. It is 14-7, California on top of Kutztown here on KUR. In addition to the online home for Kutztown University Athletics, KUBears.com, there are several ways to follow the Golden Bears through social media. 
Find out about KU Athletics on Twitter by following at KU Golden Bears. Become a fan on Facebook by searching for and liking Kutztown University Athletics. Finally, check out how to sign up for email and mobile phone updates at KUBears.com. Stay in touch with the Kutztown Golden Bears. Follow the radio voice of Kutztown University KUR on Instagram and Snapchat. Enjoy a steady stream of content from your favorite student DJs. Just search KUR 1670 or search hashtag KU Radio on any social media platform. We are the radio voice of Kutztown University KUR. Colleen's Craft and Flowers is your premier full service florist and gift shop. Located at 16 North White Oak Street in the heart of Kutztown, Colleen's features an extensive line of unique gifts in addition to a wide selection of fresh flowers. KU students are encouraged to use bear bucks for birthdays, anniversaries, or just because. And yes, Colleen's delivers. For more information, call Colleen's at 610-683-9330. That's 610-683-9330 or visit kutztownflorist.com. Welcome here to the start of the second quarter. Cuts down down 14 to 7 here to California of Pennsylvania. Ball is snapped to DeGalbo. DeGalbo going deep over the middle and is caught for the big gain over to the 40 in California territory. Catch was made by number 16, Amadou Berry. Great play there. And that's Kutztown's first big passing play. Keeping the tempo up. Kutztown moving the ball. DeGalbo in shotgun. He's got Nablet to his left. Three receivers to the far side. Ball snapped. Handoff goes to Nablet. And he is brought down after a good pickup. He's past the 40 over to the 39-yard line. That was a great play by Malik Aikens on the end there. He was getting blocked and was able to get his right hand across to get the tackle there. Bringing down almost two men at the same time. Keeping the tempo up. Gallo in shotgun. Has Niblet to his right. Barry in motion. And ball snap. He's looking. Gallo fires. Checks down. To Nablet. Nablet makes a man miss. Gets a block. He's to the 35, the 30. Tackled out of bounds at about the 34. First down, cut down. Unfortunately, there, he had Connor Sullivan right open after uh, in the middle of the play for an even bigger game. But I'll take that. We'll certainly take a first down any day of the week. So, DeGalbo in the Pierce, shotgun. DeGalbo hasn't had an incompletion so far in the entire game. And that's on about seven or eight attempts. So definitely a good start for him. So Reynolds lined up to his right. DeGalbo takes a snap. It's play action. Fires over the middle. That's caught. Big hit there at the end of the play. Ball's caught at the 10-yard line. First down, cuts down. Catch is made by Barry yet again. They're really driving here. That's their second big pass of, the, of this drive. Two big plays there by Kutztown. That is going to set up first and goal on the nine-yard line. Pick up about 20, keeping the tempo up to Galbo. In shotgun, he's got Reynolds to his right. Three receivers to the far side, one to the near side. Ball is snapped. The Galbo's going to take off. Get the block from Reynolds. He's at the five. Into the end zone for the touchdown, Golden Bears. And just like that, we are an extra point away from being all tied up. Great play design there. Colin DeGalbo takes the snap, takes off immediately. Gets a block there by Reynolds. Great job on his part. And into the end zone for the score. That's after a couple of really big passing plays. So break off the run there. That's well executed. Rosenfeld on for the extra point. Ball is snapped. A little bit of a high snap, and the ball is blocked. Juggled around for a little bit. A little bit of a scramble for it. Wrapped up by California. So, still a point behind. But the the main idea here is Kutztown able to find the end zone. 
14 to 13. I went down to my stat sheet there. I wasn't looking. I was just expecting that extra point was going in. Missed out. A little bit of a high snap there. Uh, tried to get the snap down there. Blocked. But it is 14 to 13 now. Just now 1251 left here in the second quarter. Got to say, good job on that drive. Kutztown moved the ball very well there uh, after getting stopped on the previous drive. I'd like to point out a stat that we were kind of talking about before the broadcast. Kutztown is 21-1 and when allowing 24 or fewer points. So we'll see if California is able to put up more points. They're already at 14, and that's we're only a little bit into the second quarter. So Rosenfeld ready to kick it away. You have Jalen Bell back deep for the return. It is fielded at about the 1. He's at the 5, the 10, the 15, wrapped up at about the 15. They'll mark him down at the 17-yard line. Good job there by the Kutztown return team. Excuse me, Kutztown kicking team. That's going to set up first and 10 at the California 17. And that's their worst starting field position so far in this game. We'll see if Kutztown's able to get a stop. They've been close multiple times, but it always seems like Cal is able to pull out a first down or a touchdown. It's good coverage there by Kutztown, certainly. Uh, so Mitchell in shotgun. He's got Brown to his left. Ball snap and it is fumbled. Recovered right away by Mitchell. Looks like he might not have been ready for the snap there, but able to recover pretty well. Seemed like the snap caught him off guard a little bit. That's actually going to set them back. Loss of about five, it seems. It's going to set up second and about 15. And I'd like to throw it back to that stat about 24 points. Uh, if Kutztown's opponents score more than 25 points, they are 8 and 15. So Mitchell takes the snap, ball is handed off to Brown. And he'll pick up about three. And that's going to set up sec uh, third and 11. So if the Vulcans are able to cross that 24, 25 point threshold, they have a much better chance of winning the game. Uh, obviously, the more points you score, the more likely you are to win. But it seems especially true against this Kutztown defense. So it'll be third and 11 here for California. Mitchell in shotgun. He's got Brown to his left. Drops back. He's looking. He's going deep. And it is caught by Livingston. He's at the 35, the 30, the 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, California. Wow. <laughs> Biggest play of the game by far. Wow, that's that's all I got to say about that. Looked like Kutztown was bringing the, bringing the blitz there and almost able to get to the quarterback, but some good blocking on the quarterback's right side and was able to allow him to get the pass away to a wide-open receiver who just blew by everyone else. Third down and 11, and boy, did Livingston burn him deep. Kutztown really, Kutztown really has to clean up those third down and longs. They've been getting burned on all of them. Yeah, third down defense has not been a strong suit for Kutztown today. So we're going to see also Brooks here for the extra point. Ball is spotted. The kick is away, and we're going to have a on the flag. flag. Kick was good, but we do have a flag. Oh. We're going to have a delay game called on game California. So we're going to kick it again. It'll be a five yard penalty. All right, so it is 20 to 13 now, pending the extra point for California. Ball is snapped, kick is away, and the kick is good. So, 21 to 13 now. 11:20 left here in the excuse me, 11:30 left here in the first half. Again, you you know, 
Falls on about the what? I'm going to say about the 17, 18 yard line. I mean, that's an 81 yard yeah, touchdown that's, play. That's, that's a big throw. That's a big throw there by Mitchell. Well, it's caught at about the, the 50. Good throw in the air there by Mitchell. And I feel like in the past on the third down and longs, Kutztown has been going for the prevent defense to stop those long plays, but it hasn't been working because. Uh, the Vulcans have been able to pick up the first downs on like third and 11, third and whatever. Uh, so maybe this time they didn't go for the prevent and it burned them. Some quick uh, first quarter stats for you. Craig Reynolds, five rushes for 50 yards as long as 29. Uh, as far as receiving goes, Reynolds, 32 yards. Josh Lee, 15 yards on two receptions. And Connor Sullivan, 14 yards on one reception. So we get ready for California to kick it away. Brian also Brooks getting ready to kick it off to Craig Reynolds. And it is away, and it's going to be a shorter kick. Reynolds taking it at about the 12. He's at the 20 and brought down at about the 25-yard line. Win definitely a factor on that last kick there. Also Brooks has been pretty consistent kicking it to the 1 so far. Yeah, that one is worst kick by far, but Vulcan's able to tackle him pretty quickly anyway. So Kutztown starting with pretty good field possession here. They'll be starting at about the 25-yard line. We get another look at the Kutztown offense. They moved the ball pretty well last time. Drive resulted in points. They were just stopped with the extra point. So DeGalbo in shotgun. Going three receivers to the far side. Man in motion. Ball snaps, fires, and it is caught for no pickup. In that last drive for Kutztown, I don't think there were any third downs. They were just able to get it done on the first or second down. And if we go back to the first quarter, Kutztown uh, was 0-1 for third down conversions and then also 0-1 on fourth down conversions. So those first two plays even more key for Kutztown as they haven't been able to convert on third down. Uh, last catch there was made by 82 Mason McElroy. So, DeGalbo in shotgun. He's got rounds to the left. Ball snapped. He fires over the middle and is caught close to the first down marker. Pickup of about nine. That one is over to Connor Sullivan. So, set up third and one for Kutztown. Keeping with the quick tempo here. DeGalbo takes a snap. Handoff goes to Reynolds. Reynolds powers through for the first down. Get about three on the play. And we haven't said Reynolds' name in a little bit. I feel like during that last drive, uh, Kutztown was able to spread it out even more than usual and get it to a couple other guys. But this time, relying on Reynolds to get that first down conversion. They did a pretty good job of spreading the field there on that last drive. I have to agree with that. So DeGalbo... In shotgun, he's got Reynolds to his right. Ball snap. Handoff goes to Reynolds, and Reynolds is met in the backfield right away. That's going to be a loss of about three for Kutztown. He's going to set up second and 13. So ball be on the Kutztown 34-yard line. California was not fooled there, that's for sure. Looked like they were bringing the blitz, too. So, here on 2nd and 13, you have DeGalbo, shotgun, Reynolds to his right, two receivers to the far side, two to the near side. Ball snapped, Reynolds looking, fires, and it is caught. Flag on the play. There is a flag on the play, it was caught at about the 39-yard line. Looks like number 60 for Kutztown. Arguing about it. We'll get the ruling on the play. Would have been a pickup of about five. Offense, number 13, 15 yard penalty, second down. Get called for it on the illegal block below the waist. I was watching that too. I was going to call that out. It didn't look, that one's maybe questionable for me again. I was going to shout him out. Makes a good block on um, the defense coming up. Definitely going to get to DeGalbo quickly, but able to just slow him down a little bit so DeGalbo can get the pass away. But if it was a block too low. 
So that's going to set up second and long. It cuts down all the way back at the 19 now. Have to get up to the 47. Got to get to the 37. Oh, yes, you're right, 47. So DeGalbo in shotgun. You have Reynolds to his right. Ball snapped. Play action. So Looking much time. deep. And he's going to fire over the middle. It's caught at the 40. Tackled at about the 44 yard line. Jack Pilterton, the tight end. Huge pickup there for Kutztown. Certainly helps up. Set up third and manageable there for Kutztown after the second and 28. Pickup of 25 is going to be third and three on the 44 now. That's the first catch for him, too. And when we were reading the stats, I noticed that Kutztown doesn't like to throw it to their tight ends very often. Very big key play there to make it third and manageable. And again, very important for field position, too, because if you don't get that play, probably doing a short run and then punting it off. Great job of getting it through the zone. Ball snapped there. Over to 42, Jack Pilskerton again, and they're going to pick up the first down. Gallo taking a big shot there, but able to hold in long enough to get the throw away, and it was a little high, but an athletic catch on the ball. Two catches in a row. Big drive for him. So Kutztown is now in California territory at the 49. They'll make a few personnel changes in the bullet into the ball game. He's lined up to the left of DeGalbo, Reynolds to the right. You have two receivers to the far side, one to the near side. And before the snap, timeout California. California. First one of the game. All right, so they'll use up their first timeout. We're going to take a quick break here at the game. It is 21-13 California, 7.49 left on the clock here on the radio voice of Kutztown, KUR. Since 1994, The Bagel Bar, located at 214 West Main Street in the borough of Kutztown, is a local internet cafe featuring strong varieties of New York bagels, cream cheeses, sandwiches, fresh brewed coffee, and smoothies. Whether you work, study, or live in the area, The Bagel Bar has your favorite breakfast and lunch. To place an order, call 610-683-5440. That's 610-683-5440. Mention you heard this on Kutztown University Radio. KU students, have you ever thought about studying abroad, living and studying in another country during the summer, for a semester, or even for a whole year? Did you know that students in any major can study abroad and that it can fit into your current program of study? Classes are taught in English in most programs. Golden Bears learn everywhere. Come to the Study Abroad Fair on Thursday, September 20th in MSU 218 from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. to learn about the opportunities that are available to you. You can meet representatives from many study abroad programs, get brochures to review with your family, and learn more about the process. Financial aid may be used for programs, and you might qualify for a study abroad scholarship. More information at kutztown.edu slash studyabroad. That's kutztown.edu slash studyabroad. And put Thursday, September 20th in MSU 218 from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. on your calendar for the study abroad fair. Five and tackled at about the 42-yard line. London Cloud with a great tackle there. It's Gabo from behind. Pickup of about seven. Going to set up second and three here. That would have been about a 15-yard gain. Cloud hadn't gotten in there. Good recovery, too. All right, so Gabo in shotgun. He's got Reynolds to his right. Two receivers to the near side, one to the far side. Ball snapped. Gabo rolling out. He fires to the near side, and it is caught. First down, cuts down at the 35-yard line. Amadu Berry with the catch. He's going to set up the first down for cuts down at about the 34-yard line. I think that's still no incompletion for DeGalbo. He's been on fire so far today. Got to give him props. Getting things done with his legs, too. So DeGalbo takes a snap. He fires over to Sullivan. Sullivan at the 35, the 30, breaks a tackle. And he's brought down at about the 30-yard line. And that's a good play to run on the first down. Able to get three, four, five yards 
setting up possibilities on second and third down to do a couple more a little crazy things. If you want to set up a long throw on the 30-yard line, I feel like it's doable on second and five, whereas if you're second and 10, second and 15, kind of bite yourself if it doesn't work out. It'll be second and five at the 29. Cuts down to Galbo. Makes the play over to Barry again, and he is brought down. And we're going to have a late tackle out of bounds. Barry made the catch at about the 30, excuse me, the 27 yard line. Penalty is on London Cloud. California. Yep, London Cloud. A great name. I don't think we've mentioned his name much yet. Uh, great name, London Cloud. But penalty goes on him for the late hit. And he made a great play on the first down. He did. Uh, he earlier did. on, and now here. A little bit of a mistake there for Cloud. Makes it up to Kutztown by let him have extra yards. So to Galbo, shotgun. They are at the 13-yard line, first and 10, deep in California territory, in the red zone now. So Reynolds goes in motion to his right. To Galbo, takes a snap. Fakes the pitch. He's going to take it himself. He's at the 10, the 5, and out of, bounds. out of bounds at the 2. That was close. That was close. Out of bounds the 2-yard line. Great run there by DeGallo. He's going to pick up the first down. It's going to be first and goal at the 2. Yeah, good job here by DeGallo so far. Using his legs. He's got a couple pretty good runs here. And he's got that touchdown run, too. He does have a touchdown run. He's close to two right there, too. To Colin DeGalbo, he is in shotgun. He's got Reynolds to his left. He's got two receivers to the near side. Snap goes to Reynolds. Reynolds takes it in for the touchdown. touchdown. And with that, it is now 21-19 pending the extra point. You go for two here? You definitely have to think about going for two here, that's for sure. And it looks like that's what Kutztown's going to do. I I definitely agree with that, going for two here. I think they might try to put it back into Reynolds' hands. In their last game, they gave it to Reynolds with two touchdowns, which was what made him the PSAC Offensive Player of the Week. Uh, But the first touchdown in this game, the Galbo keeping it himself. Alrighty, so, man in motion. They're going to throw it over to 82. Great play there. Great tackle. Yeah, tackle made by the cornerback, number three, Brandon Edwards. Wow, really good tackle there. Throwing over to number two, Mason McElroy, the wide receiver. Great job there, though, by California stuffing that one out. Now up by two. Now up by two. It's 21-19. Cuts down down by two to California. 532 left here in the second quarter and first half. It's not uh, a pretty exciting game so far. Pretty good so. game so far. We've seen pretty decent amount of offense here by both teams. Um, I'm sure defensively both teams are going to want to, you know, sure some things up yeah. going into halftime. Um We've had more big plays than both defenses allowed in the last game. Um, just off the top of my head. And also, no sacks yet. Yeah, still yet to see a sack. We have seen some pretty good pressure by both teams. A uh, couple balls that were batted. Um, so. But no major defensive plays. Nothing yet. Except the blocked extra point. So we have Alec Rosenfeld kicking it away. Over to the 5. He's at the 10, the 15, and brought down at about the 15-yard line. They'll mark him down at the 16. Good tackle by number 20 for Kutztown. He almost got blocked into him. So good coverage there by the Kutztown kicking team. So we'll get another look at the California offense here. So, what have your thoughts been on the California offense so far? They've been doing a good job, and look at the stats from the first quarter. They were 3 of 4 on third down and 1 of 1 on fourth down, so it's really important to keep the drive going, and they've been able to do that every time. All right, so Mitchell's going to take the snap, fires wide, and it is incomplete. And just like here, they kind of sabotage themselves on first down or second down, 
um, making it third and hard. But again, they've been able to make it on third and hard. Um, so all the power to them, I guess. So that's going to set up second and ten now for California. Like we've said earlier, touchdown's been good on first and second downs from the third down defense. Mitchell in shotgun takes the snap, handoff goes to Brown. Brown makes a man miss, and he's going to get to about the 20 yard line pickup of about two. Nelson Brown with the carry. And it's going to set up third and about eight. And here's an, another third down and kind of long. Eight is is not automatic for sure, but Kutztown has not been able to stop the, uh, the Vulcans on third down at all. So given the extra yard, they'll say it's third and seven. Ball's on the 20-yard line in California territory. And the one stop they did have, the Vulcans went for it on fourth down and got it anyway. But you definitely right. don't do that on this field position. So Mitchell in shotgun. He's got Brown to his right. Two receivers to the far side, two to the near side. Ball snap. He fires over the middle and it's caught by Livingston. Another first down, and we're going to have a penalty on the play. I think that's caught going to be all the way down. at the 46-yard line. Looks like head-to-head -head tackle there. Helmet-to-helmet -helmet tackle. But I've been wrong before, so we'll see. That would have, We still haven't had a punt during this game either because both teams have been able to get Decent field position to start for the most part, and then able to get a couple first downs so they'd go for it on fourth down or even score a touchdown. They've As already we await the call here on the penalty. It's 4.30 left here in the first half, 21 to 19. California on top of Kutztown. And California's already moved up, so I'm thinking they think the penalty's on Kutztown. Yeah, it did look, I think you are right, it did look like the helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact there. Lots of deliberation on this one, though. Yeah. So we'll get the call from Justin Ackley. The personal foul on the defense. I'm just going to have to assume that I was right and I was helmet-to-helmet. -helmet. And that's going to move California way up into Kutztown territory. That was another third down, third another down third and eight. Down. They're at the 20, and with the penalty and the catch, now at the Kutztown 39-yard line. Well, one thing's for sure is Chad Livingston is having himself a day, especially on third down. So, Mitchell is in the pistol right now. He's got Brown behind him. He's got one receiver to the far side, one receiver to the near side. Brown goes in motion to his right. Ball is snapped. Play action. Looking. Fire over the middle, and it is caught at the 25-yard line. Brought down at about the 21. Tyson Hill on the catch. Big play there for California. Sets up the first down. And that was Connor Maxwell for the defense. Almost able to get a step there to tip the ball before it gets to the receiver, but not quite able. Very close. Could have been an interception, too. So keeping the tempo up, Mitchell takes the snap. Handoff goes to Brown. Brown makes a man miss at the 20. He will be brought down at about the 15-yard line. Pretty decent pickup. It'll set up about second and two there for California. He's been good all game, breaking at least one tackle almost every drive or every uh, every run. He's seven seconds and three. The So set up second and three actually for California. Deep in Kutztown territory, they are now in the red zone. Good run there by Brown, like you said, a little shifty there. So, Mitchell takes the snap. Handoff goes to Brown. Brown makes a man miss. He'll dive forward. They'll mark him close to the first down marker. And they're going to say third down, and it'll be about inches. I thought he picked that one up. But nope, didn't move the chains. Got a guy down on the field, too. Yeah, we have a man down on the field for Cal U. For California. And we're going to take a quick injury timeout here. There is 2.54 left here in the first half. California 21, Kutztown 19 here on the radio voice of Kutztown University, KUR. Follow KUR, an award-winning radio station, on Twitter to receive exciting daily content delivered straight to your newsfeed. 
you'll discover diverse music, breaking news, and engaging student DJ content. Visit twitter.com slash KU Radio to tweet along. Remember to use hashtag KU Radio on social media. We are the radio voice of Kutztown University. K-U-R. To get the most up-to-date and in-depth information about the Kutztown University Golden Bears, visit KU Athletics online at KUBears.com. KUBears.com features extensive coverage for all 21 of Kutztown University's NCAA varsity sports. The website also features video content and allows fans to follow select games through live statistics. Be sure to check out the Kutztown Golden Bears at KUBears.com. Go Bears, go! Welcome back after the injury timeout. It is third and inches deep in Kutztown territory. Mitchell takes the snap. Handoff goes to Brown. Brown's going to pick up the first down. He's past the 10 at the 7. It'll be first down and goal now for California. Kutztown really hasn't been able to stop these first downs at all in this first half. Now, third downs have been pretty tough on Kutztown today. Been no punts so far. And we're going to have a timeout. I think so. For Cal? Taken by Cal, it looks like. Nope. Kutztown. Timeout taken by Kutztown. So we're going to take another quick timeout break here. 21 to 19 with 2.23 left here in the first half. Cal is driving. They're on the Kutztown 8 here on the radio voice of Kutztown University, KUR. Camillo's Italian Restaurant and Pizzeria, located at 264 Greenwich Street near campus, is a family-owned and operated KU favorite. You'll immediately taste the difference at Camillo's, where they use fresh garlic cloves, 100% extra virgin olive oil, and sun-ripened tomatoes imported from Italy. Even though their ingredients are the best money can buy, their prices will surprise you. Camillo's has over 25 toppings, one of the largest selections along with eight different sauces loaded with flavor, and free piping hot delivery to your door. The taste you want at family-friendly prices. When you want a really great homemade meal, call Camillo's at 610-683-5637. That's 610-683-5637. Bon appetit. California driving deep in Kutztown territory. It is first down and goal from the eight-yard line. Mitchell takes a snap. Handoff goes to Brown, and he is wrapped up immediately, powers through, and he'll pick up a about one on the play. He puts a lot of effort into every play. Even though he's wrapped up by four or five Kutztown, Golden Bears, he's still moving his legs, getting up. Oh, he lost the yard on that one. But still, really good effort. Still a second and goal for California. We'll see what uh, Kutztown has in store defensively here. See what kind of stand we can get from him. So Mitchell in shotgun. He's got Brown to his right. Takes a snap. He's lobbing it up in the end zone, and it is incomplete. Pass was intended for Tyson Hill. Good coverage there on the part of Kutztown. That's number four, uh, Haki Cox Cohen. That throw is pretty uncatchable, too. But now, now we are in third down. Now I'm worried. <laughs> now we're worried. It is third down and goal now. For California. I hate that second down play. The slant oh, the, to the end of the end zone, it never works for me. Very popular, that fade route. I don't like it. So, Mitchell in shotgun. Brown to his left. Ball snaps. He's looking. He fires, and it is incomplete. Cox Cohen with the breakup intended for Tyson Hill. And we got a third down stop. He did it. He threw to the wrong man there for me. They did the... Kind of like pick play, but not going to be called a pick play where the two receivers go a crossing route. And one of them looked open to me going towards the end of the end zone, uh, but he threw it towards the middle of the end zone, which was blocked pretty shortly. So California is going to like to kick the field goal here. Uh, Brian also Brooks is out. He's been very good so far. Hasn't missed yet. This will be about oh, a 26-yard field goal. Got to make it a little easier for him. Oh, or not. False start on California. He moved because someone else moved. Make it a little bit harder for him, actually. 
So it'll be about a 31-yard field goal now for also Brooks. Yeah, I got to say, pretty good job there on the part of the, the Kutztown defense. Just getting that stop there. It's only their second time stopping them on third down, and then this time not worth it to go for it on fourth down. Yeah, good idea just to take the points here if you are California. Especially if your kickers is good. Yeah, also Brooks has been pretty good today so far, just from extra points. He's only a sophomore. All right, so he lines it up. Ball is spotted. The kick is away, and the kick is good. Also Brooks. So 24 to 19 now. California University of Pennsylvania now over Kutztown. Minute 31 left here in the first half. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what kind of offense Kutztown's running here. Do you want to, you know, try and take some shots downfield? Uh, I mean, you have a pretty decent amount of time. Minute 31. I definitely want to see them try it, especially at home. And in a game this close. Down by five, you're at home. Your offense has been pretty good today, especially with stretching the ball deep. You got two timeouts. Two timeouts, yeah. I say you take your chances. Maybe maybe see what happens first and second down. If you get nothing going, maybe you start running the ball. I want to go back to those point after attempts in that field goal. We've had a uh, number three. Cox Cohen for Kutztown trying to get pressure on the kick every time. He's been very close, uh, starting right on the end, uh, but not quite able to get there. Cox Cohen has done a pretty good job there on Tyson Hill so far today. So, we'll get ready for the kickoff. And it is away to Reynolds. He'll take it at about the 7. He's at the 10. He's at the 15. Bumps it to his man at the 20. Still going. 25. Makes a man miss. And brought down at about the 27-yard line. Good return there by Reynolds. I saw some more extracurriculars there at the end. A little some extra blocking. But they haven't been calling those for the most part. Looks like we have another injured player on the field right now. Lots of injuries so, so far this game. Yeah, a lot of a lot of injuries here on the part of California. Yeah, all all on California. Trying to get a number there. Uh looks like thirty eight. Thirty eight. Maybe. Yeah, no, that did look like thirty eight. That is Tyreek Jones. So he will be helped off quickly. Excuse oh, me, no, not thirty eight, number thirty. So Ashid Page Jones, but he's walking away. It's a little walking, bit of walking off, but looks okay. Walking off under his own power, uh, limping a little bit, but glad to see that he is all right. We'll start this very important drive. We've got a minute twenty-one left here in the first half. Kutztown starting at their own twenty-seven yard line, down by five, looking to put up some points here before the half. So, we've got DeGalbo out there, and he's got Abdul Hassan Nablet to his left. Three receivers to the far side, one receiver to the near side. He'll take the snap, and play action. Ooh. He fakes it. DeGalbo's going to take it himself. He's at the 30. The 35, the 40. Excellent Brought down at about the 44-yard line. Excellent first down play. Great pick up there by DeGalbo. So first down and 10 at the 44. They're going to keep the tempo going. DeGalbo takes the snap. He's looking. He pump fakes. He's going deep, oh. and it is incomplete on the far side. He was looking at about the 35-yard line. Scary throw there. The first thing completion of of the day. Number 10, Kutztown doing a double move, but doesn't continue his route. That is Diego Torres. That was closer to the cornerback than it was Torres there on that play. Yeah, Torres just stopped running, and Cal U had the chance there, but the ball was thrown pretty far. A little bit of miscommunication on the Kutztown part. So, 
About 56 seconds left here. Second and 10 to Galbo in shotgun. He's got Nablet to his left. Ball snapped. He's going to take off and go. He's wrapped up after a short pickup. It'll be about a pickup of one. So we'll get to about the 45-yard line. Third down and nine, 40 seconds, 39. Clock still running. You got to hurry here. I agree with the no timeout here, especially if you don't get this third down conversion. Well, snap. Galvo fires over the middle and almost picked off. Incomplete pass. In the Galvo's London Cloud with the deflection. In the Galvo's eyes, number 12 was wide open for him, wasn't able to see. London Cloud there. So it's a good thing they didn't call that timeout. Get a little bit of extra time off, so it makes it harder for Cal U to get possession on this one. There's 28 seconds left, but they do have two timeouts too, and I wouldn't put it past them to go for this, especially if there's a good punt return. I'll be interested to see what California decides to do. They may elect to run out the clock or try and put up more points. So we'll see the punter for the first time today, Dean Cricks. It is put away and into the end zone for a touchback. <laughs> they brought almost no pressure whatsoever on that punt. Yeah, not... There's like one guy. Not exactly what you're hoping for for Kutztown. Uh You'll take it over a shank True. at this point, though. True. Um, I wouldn't be too surprised if they kneeled it either, but they have had a couple good explosive passing plays. And again, 20 seconds with two timeouts. I don't want to say plenty of time, but it's definitely enough time. It's manageable. Uh, so they'll start. California will start at the 20. It looks like they're just going to take a knee. And they will. So that'll bring us to the end of the first half as the clock winds down. They will elect not to take any more plays. That will be your final play of the half. That's out. Kutztown going out of the second quarter without a lead, which is, in, which is new for them in this season. So... With the end of the first half here, the score is now 24 to 19, California on top of Kutztown. So we're going to take a quick break here. We'll be back for the second half. California will be receiving the kick after electing to kick in the first half. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the field. 2419 California here on the radio voice of Kutztown University, KUR. You're listening to the radio voice of Kutztown University, KUR. Did you miss a show? Want to hear your favorite shows on your time? Check out our Mixcloud page where you can hear select programming on your schedule. Mixcloud is a digital audio streaming platform service rethinking radio. Just go to mixcloud.com forward slash KU radio and click on the show that you want to hear. KUR, the radio voice of Kutztown University. Show your maroon and gold pride. Be sure to check out Kutztown Athletics Apparel across various outlets in Lehigh and Berks counties. KU Golden Bears gear can now be purchased at Walmart and Temple and Boscov's in Berks County and the Lehigh Valley. Also, Kutztown gear is available at the official headquarters for KU gear, the KU Student Bookstore located on the scenic KU campus. Make sure to stock up on your maroon and gold apparel this fall and be ready for the new year. Sheets is proud to support the Kutztown University Golden Bears. Come to Sheets and taste the made-to-order difference. Our 24-7 touchscreen menu is made to order fresh and offers a variety of taste bud favorites from chicken sandwiches and burgers to salads, subs, and breakfast sandwiches, all prepared with any combination of toppings you can dream up, customized to your exact specifications. Stop by after the game. Stop by anytime, all day, every day. Exercise your taste buds. There's something for everyone at Sheets. Sheets feel the love. It's Telescopic Topics, a look into the world above us. The world is your oyster. Who said it? Shakespeare, actually. He was right, though. The world is full of fascinating stuff if you take some time and look around. For example, if you've ever been to the beach, you'll know about tides. How there's high tide and low tide, and that the rising and subsequent receding of the water means you'll have to move your towel if you don't want to be submerged up to your chin at certain times of the day. Ever caught yourself grumbling about doing just that? Asking why you're spurning the universe for disturbing your tanning session in the sun? 
Well, let me give you targets for your anger. The moon and gravity. Don't be too harsh on them, though. The moon, because of its distance from the sun and us, has a gravitational pull on the earth whether it wants to or not. This pull causes these things called bulges, which affect both the water in the oceans and the crust of the earth. The bulges move us humans as well, but since they affect such a large area, about half of the earth, we can't tell individually. Anyway, the water on the planet closest to the moon is pulled towards the moon by gravity, and the earth itself is pulled away from the water on the opposite side, causing high tide on the sides closest and furthest from the moon, and low tide on the sides perpendicular to the moon. Why doesn't the water on the other side of the earth move with the crust? Good question! It's because the water that isn't moving is in the furthest position from the moon's gravity, so the strength of the pull is weaker, leaving the water where it is but pulling the earth. Since the earth moves all the time and the moon moves with us, the tides change as our position relative to the moon and the sun change. High tide and low tide happen twice a day every 12-ish hours. Now, next time you're at the beach, you'll know why you have to relocate. There are some pretty pearls out there, guys. You've just got to take some time and crack open a few oysters. Telescopic Topics, a look into the world above us. Stay tuned to KUR for more Telescopic Topics. Telescopic Topics is a production of the KU Physical Sciences Department and is recorded by KU Astronomy students in the studios of KUR. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time. The Women's Center at Custer University promotes the well-being and advancement of all women through education, support, action, compassion, and outreach. Visit the center, browse their library or over 1,000 books and videos, or just relax in a safe and comfortable environment. To get involved, visit the Women's Center in Old Main, 126, Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m., or discover their website at www dot slash women's center custom university veteran center located in mcfarland student union room 262 exists to help our military affiliated population to succeed in their educational and career goals the veterans services center is a vital hub where students can study relax have access to computers and printers meet other veterans and receive assistance with their gi bill and other benefits Want to learn more? Email the center at veterans at custown.edu or call them at 610-683-4228. I lost my vision five years ago. They called it macular degeneration. I called it devastating. Thought I'd never read again. But then she discovered Talking Books, a free program through the Library of Congress's National Library Service for the Blind and Physically Handicapped. Keeping me connected to my world? Now you're talking. This year, the Talking Book and Braille program celebrates 80 years of delivering books and magazines right to the doorsteps of those unable to read the printed word. Whatever you're into, there's so much to choose. Letting me read what all my friends are reading, too. Now you're talking. Any individual unable to read regular print due to blindness, low vision, or physical handicap is eligible for Talking Books. And it's free. I lost my eyesight back in Vietnam, but Talking Books have really been there for me. The books I want on my own terms? Now you're talking. To learn more about Talking Books, call the National Library Service for the Blind and Physically Handicapped at one 888 nls read or visit www.loc.gov slash nls. Choose a Kutztown master's degree, offering 26 degrees in the arts, sciences, and education. KU graduate programs prepare you to enter the workforce, advance your career, or move into a new field. With international faculty, affordable costs, flexible schedules, and internship opportunities, don't miss out. Apply online or stop by the graduate admissions office conveniently located in Boxwood House on Kutztown campus. Since the early 70s, Friends Incorporated, located at 658 D. Noble Street in Kutztown, has helped thousands of families in northeastern Berks County strengthen relationships with themselves and their community through a wide range of outreach services. Every family and individual is offered case management services, food pantry assistance, counseling, support groups, and program referrals. Contact Friends Incorporated at 610-683-7790. That's 610 
683-7790 or visit their website www.friendinc.org Friend Incorporated helping our neighbors to strengthen our community Green light Hey girl, school zone I'm getting hungry, car changing lanes You want to meet me for pizza? Stop sign, intersection clear Yeah, street, pizza sounds good Ball in street? Girl in street! <gasps> it's hard to concentrate on two things at once, like texting and driving. Stop the text, stop the wrecks. How will you stop texting and driving? Tell us at stoptextstoprex.org. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Check out the Kutztown University Rohrbach Library's website for everything you need to know about the Rohrbach Library. From simple things like library hours to more advanced things like PC availability, print quotas, citation information, links to Rohrbach Library's mobile applications, the Rohrbach Library Facebook page, and much, much more, it's all at kutztown.edu forward slash library. That's kutztown.edu forward slash library. The Rohrbach Library is a great public service to all Kutztown students, faculty, and staff, as well as the Kutztown community. The Northeast Berks Chamber of Commerce is your premier resource and voice for trusted local business. The Chamber advances regional economic and cultural growth through supportive collaboration with business and community organizations, as well as government. For more information, call the Northeast Berks Chamber of Commerce at 610-683-8860. That's 610-683-8860, or visit their website at northeastberkschamber.com. Scouting is awesome. You get to do a whole bunch of stuff that you never thought you could do. I've gone skiing, snowboarding, surfing. We chopped wood with an axe. We get to go caving, climbing, mountain biking. I kind of like the hiking and scout. Scouting is a lifestyle. The scout is trustworthy, loyal, friendly, courteous, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. Scouting is my direction. Adventures to remember, words to live by. Go to scouting.org today. Be a scout. Take a look under your bed. Find stuff under there? What about jobs? No? Now try your basement. There's a pair of overalls that overall you're not so into anymore. A perfectly good laptop that hasn't seen your lap in months. And even more stuff. But still no jobs? Well, you really have both. See, stuff is defined as household articles considered as a group. Sometimes this stuff is no longer needed. Wait, no longer needed? That can't be right. Because remember those jobs you were looking for? Those are really needed. And they're the stuff inside your stuff. Even inside that winter coat that moved with you to Phoenix. Our job is to unlock those jobs. And it starts when you donate your stuff to your local Goodwill. Here's how we do it. When you donate to Goodwill, we sell your stuff to provide job training for people right here in your community. So just by teaming up with Goodwill, you help create jobs. And isn't that worth parting with the leftover keytar from your 80s cover band? Goodwill. Donate stuff, create jobs. Find your nearest donation center at Goodwill.org. A message from Goodwill and the Ad Council. This is also Riz from Reading Police Department. If you have your wipers on due to inclement weather, you must turn on your headlights. If you don't follow this law, you could be fined. So remember, wipers on, headlights on. It's the law. To learn more about traffic safety, visit JustDrivePA.com. Brought to you by PennDOT and this station. Colleen's Craft and Flowers is your premier full-service florist and gift shop. Located at 16 North White Oak Street in the heart of Kutztown, Colleen's features an extensive line of unique gifts in addition to a wide selection of fresh flowers. KU students are encouraged to use bear bucks for birthdays, anniversaries, or just because. And yes, Colleen's delivers. For more information, call Colleen's at 610-683-9330. That's 610-683-9330 or visit kutztownflorist.com. Charles the Carpet. Charles the Carpet King will carpet your entire house for only $39. That's right, your entire house for only $39. But don't expect Charles the Carpet King to do it himself because Charles the Carpet King passed away last week at 47 from the same disease that got his father, so he won't be around for his family. And sadly, it could have been detected early with a simple test, but Charles didn't get it. Have you gotten the medical test you need? For a list of tests every man should have, go to AHRQ.gov. A public service announcement brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. KU students, have you ever thought about studying abroad? 
living and studying in another country during the summer, for a semester, or even for a whole year? Did you know that students in any major can study abroad and that it can fit into your current program of study? Classes are taught in English in most programs. Golden Bears learn everywhere. Come to the Study Abroad Fair on Thursday, September 20th in MSU 218 from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. to learn about the opportunities that are available to you. You can meet representatives from many study abroad programs, get brochures to review with your family, and learn more about the process. Financial aid may be used for programs, and you might qualify for a study abroad scholarship. More information at kutztown.edu slash studyabroad. That's kutztown.edu slash studyabroad. And put Thursday, September 20th in MSU 218 from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. on your calendar for the Study Abroad Fair. From Women's Lacrosse, Devin Fitzpatrick, all PSAC third team. From men's basketball, O. Williams, PSAC Freshman of the Year. And Anthony Lee, all PSAC first team, all Atlantic Region second team. From men's track and field, Xavier Gutierrez, all PSAC in the 500 meter and the 300 meter steeplechase. The men's track and field, 4x800 relay team, all PSAC and PSAC champion, featuring Steve Maine, Cameron Christopher, Jose Colon Cruz, and Jared Luckinett. And Cameron Christopher, all region and indoor. From women's track and field, all PSAC 4x800 relay team, consisting of Aaron Callahan, Julie Stratton, Julia Wimkin and Dootleen Joseph. Luke Hoffman, all PSAC and all Atlantic region in the discus. PSAC Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Kutztown University Golden Bears football here on the radio voice of Kutztown University, KUR. I am Connor High, along with Kevin Group. Yep, and we are back for the second half. Uh, hasn't quite started back up yet. Got about six minutes yet before we start the Ray, second half. Teams are just PSAC coming back out onto the field. Football. We'll do a quick little, uh, quick little recap of the first half region, here. Um, so, California University of Pennsylvania region. is currently up 24 to 19 on Kutztown. Uh, it's been a pretty good game for both offenses. Uh, Big story of today's game, though, so far is Coach Town's third down defense. Yeah, it's, it's definitely been a very competitive game, but those third downs, Coach Town really hasn't been able to get any stops in. Um, the Vulcans haven't had a single punt in this whole game. Which is kind of bad if you're. No, it's, not, it's not great. It's not, it's not great. Good. I can assure you that. Um, and that's been off of multiple third downs, and I think one or two fourth down conversions. Uh, and a lot of them have been third and long, or fourth and even a moderate amount. Um, Kutztown really hasn't been able to to get those stops, and so it's it's kept the Vulcans drives going, been right. able to get them some points. Um, really, the difference in the score is the blocked extra point and that field goal to end the game. Yeah, I mean, so far to end the uh, end the first half. I got gotcha. you, uh, but at, so far uh, we haven't seen uh, California end the drive without points, and I think that's something that Kutz is definitely going to look to do. Uh, defensive adjustments here in the second half, um, and I don't I, I don't think that's sustainable. For the Vulcans, I don't think they're going to go the entire game scoring every drive. Well, you hope, at least. You certainly hope. You certainly. I mean, if Kutztown gets a stop, like first and second down defense has been really good for Kutztown. Yeah. Uh, it's once you get to third down because it's, it's been third and seven, third and eight. Yeah, you've had a couple of third shorts. Yeah, that one it was like third and uh, third and eleven. Yeah, uh, even after the penalty. Um, and maybe if Kutztown gets one of those, like the Avalanche, the Plug Leach, open well, up and you're able to get a bunch after that. If you make at least one stop on one of those third downs, I mean, California doesn't score. I mean, they, like like we have said, California has scored on every single drive so far, whether it be a touchdown or field goal. So I think if you are able to limit what they can do on offense, um, it's certainly going to help a big degree. Uh, getting back into this ball game, and conversely, 
Um, Pittsburgh's obviously been pretty good on offense. They're only five points down. Um, they missed an extra point and went for it for two one time and didn't get that either. So, again, five points. So that could be a three-point deficit after having a pretty poor performance by your defense. If your offense keeps going well, especially DeGallo has had an excellent game so far. Very good game only so far. Only two incompletions so far. Uh, and only, only a couple really long passes uh, that were successful, mostly short, like, check downs. Uh, but he's also been really good on his legs, too. Lots of good runs and had that running touchdown and almost had another one, too, uh, where Reynolds eventually got it. Yeah, we uh, we said Reynolds uh, had 50 yards rushing after the first quarter. Five rush, uh, Only five rushing yards there in the second quarter. Puts him at 55 in total. Um, but, you know, he had, he had three... Three rushes there for five yards in the second quarter. Uh, Colin DeGalbo, like you said, getting it done with his arm. He's 15 for 17, 173 yards, uh, and his long was a 25-yard pass. And he's got 65 running, too. And 65 that's only yard rushing yards and a touchdown. Over 10 yards per, per carry. Yep. Uh, Colin DeGalbo has found the end zone once, and Craig Reynolds has found it twice. Uh, on California's side... Uh, Nelson Brown had 11 rushes for 39 yards and a touchdown. And Noah Mitchell, uh, who's had a very good day today so far, uh, 12 throws, uh, excuse me, 12 completions on 20 attempts, 250 yards and two touchdowns. The long was that 84-yard touchdown pass to Chad Livingston, who is also lighting it up today. Five receptions, 155 yards and two touchdowns. Obviously, the 84. Yard reception certainly helping him there. Um, first downs have been pretty even for both teams. California has 13, Coach Down has 15. Um, you know, both teams are two for two uh, in the red zone so far also. What are you looking for to start the second half, whether uh, it's a person or a key thing to do? Um, if I So we're going to see the California defense first. Uh, I'm sorry, we're going to see the California offense first, the Kutztown defense. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to be massive for Kutztown to have a good defensive drive. Like, you know, maybe you give up a first down or two. You know, maybe one comes on third down. But get a but punter or you have You have to get a stop somewhere. If you, want to, if you want to win this game, you have to get a stop at some point, and I think it would be a great tone setter to do it here uh, to start the – for, uh, second half. Uh, I think my key is going to be whoever gets the first turnover. We haven't seen that yet, and like we've been yep. saying, there's only been one or two punts, and, and that was also towards the end of the first half where it didn't really matter. So if there's a big turnover, especially in uh, questionable field positioning, that could swing the entire game. Like I I'm, mean, because we've seen about three close ones. Yeah. Uh, there was two of the Galpas passes. Um, that were pretty close. One went right through the hands of London Cloud, and then there was the other. Uh, Noah Mitchell fumbled the snap, fell on it right away. True. Um, so we are just about ready to get things going to start the second half. It is 24 to 19, California on top of Kutztown right now. Here on the radio voice of Kutztown University, KUR, as the first half comes to an end. The second half. Just about ready to get started. Uh, it's going to be a fun one. It's going to be a fun one. It's going to be fun so. to see what Kutztown has in store uh, for for game plan. So, I think it'll be more that, more DeGabo, uh pass options and more Reynolds running. They're working so far. It's true. So, Alec Rosenfeld, ready to kick it off. Over to Jalen Bell. And it is off, and we are ready to start the second half. It will go through the back of the end zone for a touchback. That was pretty close to going out of bounds. It was, clo- right? it was, it was very close to just wrapping in front of the, the pylon. But nope. Bailed out, gets out of the We're end good. Zone. It, it, it's it's all good. Time. We're all good, so <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> uh, so here comes the California offense for their first time out here in the first half. Um, excuse me, first time out here for the second half. 
So they'll start at the 25-yard line, first and 10. <clears throat> so we'll have Noah Mitchell in shotgun. He's got Nelson Brown to his left. Ball snaps, play action. He's going to fire over to 14. Ball's caught at the 30. He'll pick up about 15 there. That play should have been stopped earlier. The wide receivers off to the left for the Vulcans did a good job of blocking their opponents. Yeah. Uh, so he was able to get a little bit of separation and run, but it looked like he broke a tackle there, too. Jordan that Dandridge. Could have been for about five yards. Jordan Dandridge with the play. It is a first down for California. Mitchell takes the snap, fires over to Livingston. Livingston oh. hurdles and is brought down right away. Couldn't quite get over Cox going. That was practically Yikes. the same exact play, except this time they only had one man off to the left to block for him. So it was uh, met with Golden Bears a little bit sooner. So he went for the athletic hurdle play. Didn't really work out for him, but it was cool to watch. Pickup of about six. It'll be second and four for California. Mitchell in the pistol. Brown right behind him. He'll take the snap. Handoff goes to Brown, and Brown is wrapped up right away. Pickup of one. It's going to set up about third and three. So, ball is on the 48-yard line. Yep, 48-yard line. And it, this is big. This is really yeah, big for Kutztown. Yeah, here for Kutztown would be huge for their mentality. Being yeah. able to say, we stopped them on third and three, would be very useful for the rest of the game. This is exactly what we were talking about in the halftime show. All right, so Mitchell, shotgun, Brown to his left. Takes a snap. He's looking. He fires over to Livingston. Livingston makes the tackle. He quite can't get the first down. He loses the ball. They're going to mark him down. Excellent tackle at the end. There. Great tackle there. Pickup of about two. It's going to be fourth and short. And sure enough, California's going for it. They were throwing it to 80 the entire time there. Ball is at midfield on the 50-yard line. They're keeping the tempo up. Mitchell in shotgun. Try to get him with the hard count. Can't do it. Now they look over to the sideline, get some direction from the coach. Interesting uh, interesting decision there. Tried to hurry up, tried to get him with the hard count. Not a bad idea. There's too much separation for me for Cox Cohen here. Could just be a quick pass. Yeah, Cox Cohen is certainly playing off of Tyson Hill right now. And oh. we're going to have a penalty. We'll await the call. Delay of game on California. Good job there. Yeah, really good, good job of Kutztown. Not jumping there. Uh, California oh, tried getting them with a couple hard counts. Now. And we are going to see the punt team for California for the first time. So, fourth and six. Ball is on the 45-yard line. We'll see Reynolds as the returner. And Tristan Williams to punt it away. Ooh, that's a shame. Really bad punt. He shanked it. I think the punt maybe only went two yards. Yeah, that was... <laughs> wow. That's one of the worst punts I've ever seen. That, it went straight up in the air. Oh, yeah. Kutztown definitely brought a lot of guys, got into the punter's head, and he hasn't had a punt yet so far this game. So maybe he's been thinking, oh, my offense is just going to bail me out this whole game. I'm just kind of going to be able to be on the team and not do anything. So, so comes could, in. Kutztown is going to start at the 48-yard line in their own territory. Great field position. That ball went straight up and straight down. Looks like there's another injury for Cal U. Number 42. I'm, I think he was injured earlier today and came back in. Uh, 42. Get a name real quick for you. 42 is Noah Dillo, the linebacker, freshman. As we have the trainers taking a look at him now. While they're doing so, we will take a quick break here on KUR. It is 24-19, California on top of Kutztown, here on the radio voice of Kutztown University, KUR. Kutztown University offers a variety of programs that offer excellent career preparation. Visit KutztownMasters.com to learn more or email graduate at Kutztown.edu with questions. Hand in hand we'll go, dancing through the Milky Way. All right, so he just got up. He's walking off. 
Uh, we'll probably be back in about 15 seconds. Yep. Email any suggestions to KUR at kutztown.edu. Complaints, concerns, questions, whatever you may be thinking at the time, it's KUR at kutztown.edu. All right, so the Kutztown offense takes the field. Great starting possession. They are at their own 48 to start. The Galvo takes a snap. A little trickery there. Throws by number 87. He throws it downfield, and it is incomplete. Great throw there. Wow, I was not expecting that. Did a reverse. Little reverse there. And then uh, left-handed uh, improv QB there. If he had aired that one out a little bit more, I feel like that would have been a nice reception. That is Ryan Hubley on the throw. I love that play on first down. First down at 10. I'm uh, 48. Definitely a good way to start. Not quite Philly special, but, you know, pretty close. Definitely uh, inspired. I like I like the idea there, attacking early, uh on first and ten with great field possession. So, DeGalbo is in shotgun. He takes the snap. Handoff goes to Reynolds. Nope, DeGalbo's going to keep it. He's at the 50, the 45, the 40. He finds always oh, at the 30. He's at the 20, the 50, the 10, the 5. Touchdown, Golden Bears! They had just about everybody on defense, including myself, <laughs> on the fake... Colin DeGalbo with the 52-yard touchdown run. Those plays have really been working for him. The defense keeps fighting on Reynolds. Well, they're fighting hard on Reynolds. Yeah, but DeGalbo keeping it. So we're going to see Kutztown try and go for two. Yet again, they were unsuccessful the last time they did so. Want to be up by a field goal. Makes sense to me. All right, so DeGalbo. Shotgun. Handoff goes to Reynolds. Reynolds. Breaks the tackle. tackle. He's going to waltz into the end zone. Oh, a late little bit of a late hit, and they're going to call for the flag. Well, so much for waltzing into the end zone when you have a body taking you down. So that huge first two drives there. They get the stop on third down, first time in the game, and then they do a couple of trick plays there, and they're able to get a long 50-yard touchdown by DeGabo, the captain. That was exactly our point. <laughs> <laughs> and at the end there, it seemed like they were, California, a little bit frustrated tackling Reynolds out of bounds after he had already made it into the end zone for the two-point conversion. So even this kickoff, too, you could even do like a squib, catch him off guard, see if you can maybe pick up the ball, and then even if it doesn't work out, they're not going to have good field position because you get the extra yards. So it's now 27-24, to 24, cuts down up on California, 12-24 left here in the third quarter. And I, that was impressive on all every regard there for Kutztown, defensively and offensively. That's Kutztown's first time leading in a quarter and a half. Oh, yeah, that is true. Everything everything about this second half start is excellent for Kutztown. Yeah, really good start to this, uh, this second half for Kutztown. They've made the necessary adjustments, I think, to really compete here with California. We just got to see if they can do it again. Can they now, get obvious, third obviously, down stop? we still have, what, 27 minutes left of football left to play. So a lot can happen here. But Never I, over. it's very encouraging what we've seen so far. Here they got the kickoff on the 50. So with the penalty, uh, kickoff gets moved to the 50. I'd like to see a squib here. A little bit of trickery. Let's see what we get from Alec Rosenfeld here. It is, he'll punt it deep, and it is through the back of the end zone for a touchback. All right, that's the boring way to do it. (laughs) I guess that works, too. The 25-yard line. I really feel like you should squib that down the middle or maybe try and catch him off guard and not hit it as hard because you've got your entire team closer up to the kick returner than normal. You could definitely pin them down. So, I mean, California will start at about the 25. I like your idea with the squib kick. Um, certainly not a bad idea because you take the squib kick. You also run the the risk of it being fielded early and then True. an even you know better field position. True. So Mitchell is going to come out with the shotgun. Ball snapped. He's going to fire to the near side over to 14. He's caught at about the 30 and brought down immediately. Pickup of about six. That is Jordan Dandridge on the catch. 
that it'll set up second and four. So Mitchell now in the pistol. He's got Brown behind him. You have one receiver to the far side, one to the near side. Handoff goes to Brown. Brown's got nowhere to go as Kutztown wraps him up in the backfield. I, I've sung a lot of Brown's praises for going hard every single play and trying to keep his feet moving. That time but he was a little too shifty. In, in the first half, they only had 42 total yards of rushing. And if we go back, um, Kutztown's head coach seems to be very good when his defense can stop the run. I had a note here. So set up third and six at the California 29-yard line. You have Mitchell in shotgun, Brown to his right, two receivers to the far side, two to the near side. Mitchell's going to take the snap. He's looking to Danridge, and it's well over the head. Not a good throw. Incomplete. And that happens because they stopped the first and, the first and second yard, um, or the first and second play of that drive. That second run, not good. And the sound I was looking for, um, under head coach Jim Clements, Yep. this is fifth season, KU is 14-2 and two and holding its opponents to less than 100 yards rushing. So right now so we're on par for that. that. And it really seems like California PA is only getting things done with long passes. All right, so we're going to see Tristan Williams again. He shanked it last time. A little better bit better. Better punt here. Reynolds is going to call for the fair catch and receive it at about the 48-yard line. So, yep, 48-yard line. Reynolds nope, definitely expecting that one to go farther. He was lined up at like the 35-yard line, had to run into that one. So good job there by the Kutztown defense. Again, another stop on third down. So 11:03 now left here in the third quarter. Kutztown up 27 to 24. We'll get another look at the Kutztown offense here. You want so, to see more of the same of that last drive, or do you want to see more runs? What are you thinking? I'm liking. Uh, Let's spread the field a little bit here. So we'll have Colin DeGalbo in shotgun. Handoff goes to 27, brought down at about the 50 for a one-yard game. That is Nate Jones on the carry. I'd like to see us go back to Reynolds a little bit more. Yeah, we've kind of taken Reynolds uh, out of the game plan a little bit here early on. But, hey, it's been working. Yeah, that really explosive first half. Hasn't really done much here in the second yet. So Tyler Borg to the right of the Galbo. You have Matt Jones to the left. Handoff goes to Jones. Jones is going to find a hole. He's at the 45. Front down at the 44-yard line. Good pick up there. It's going to set up second and short. Excuse me, third and short. And that was 63 Austin Peterson leading the charge there as a blocker. Um, unfortunately, not able to get anyone in front of him, but definitely created some space for uh, the running back to run through. So, set of third and three, DeGalbo in shotgun. He has Nate Jones, excuse me, to his left. Looks like they're still deciding the play. Yep, Coach down looking over to the sideline over at the coach for the play. Takes the snap. He's going to take it himself. And California was all over that one. They sent two blitzers up the middle. Blocking not able to uh, account for that. That's going to be fourth and four now. For Maybe Kutztown. a little too telegraphed there on that one. They're going to punch it away. Thought about going for it. Kept the offense out there. They're going to bring on the punt unit. If they go for it there, that's a huge swing play. Either way. It is, yeah. It either sets up uh, California with great field possession if they don't get it, or this could sound definitely the safer huge play. option. Safer the option, for sure. So we'll get the punt away. It's a pretty good one. It's fielded at about the 8. Can't make a miss. And he is brought down <laughs> immediately. It's almost like he's being carried right now. <laughs> yeah, he got picked up by the two Golden Bears. I say, I say brought down. Uh, he was picked up almost by the three Golden Bear uh, defenders, great coverage though on the punt. I think Kutztown might have been surprised that they didn't call for a fair catch because they were they were really right there. close to him. Um, and then when they just got right on top of him, they just picked him up. And then a uh, little bit of a scrum there at the yeah. end of the play. Um, refs getting in the middle of it to break it up. So California's going to start here at about the 10 yard line. 
It'll be first and ten, down by three. A little bit of a hot mic there for the, the ref. Adjusting the clocks. Adjusting the clocks. So we have nine minutes left here in the third quarter now. Mitchell in shotgun. He's going to take... Nope. They're going to take a look over at the coach. Audible a little bit. Ten seconds on the play clock. Mitchell takes the snap. He's looking. He fires right away, and it is caught at the 15. Breaks a tackle over to the 20. It'll be close to a first down. That is Tyson Hill with the catch. They keep doing those same plays. Yeah. It's a, it, the slant out to the right or to the left by the, uh, the, the sideline. So they will give him the first down. They'll mark it down at the 20. It'll be first and 10 for California. So Mitchell in shotgun. He's got Brown to his left. Takes the snap. He's looking. He's going to go deep over to Hill, and it's caught at the 45-yard line. Big pickup there for a first down. Kutztown really has to shore up their passing defense. As we said earlier, they're not really getting uh, any rushing done. Oh, we got another injury. Yep, we have another injury on the play. California. Looks Big. okay. He's already getting up. Gets up right away. Trying to walk off under his own power. But like I was starting to say, Kutztown really needs to shore up that passing defense. Uh, the only thing that uh, California PA has been able to do is those either short passes, uh, slants to the left or to the right, or get a couple long passes like this. They're probably up past those four 20-plus yard plays that they had last week. Um, probably have a couple more this week. Uh, but on, on the ground, they haven't been able to get anything done. So that is going to set up first and 10 at their own 45-yard line. They're driving a little bit. So Mitchell in shotgun takes a snap. He pump fakes. He's scrambling, and he throws it away. Good uh, good coverage there by Kutztown down downfield. Good Cox pressure Cohen, there. Cox Cohen does an excellent job there to recognize that they're just doing the same exact play that Cal U has been doing the entire time when he jumps the route. So quarterback has no choice but to throw that one away. Yeah, Earl Bowles with the, the good pass rush there. Gets them out of the pocket. Creates second and ten. Got 8.22 left here in the third quarter now. Mitchell in shotgun. He's got Brown to his left. Takes the snap. He's going to take off right away, and he's going to get to the 50. And down to about, they're going to mark him down at the 47-yard line. Short of the first down will be third and short now. That's a new look play. Haven't yeah, I haven't quite seen that one there. from California. That's the, the play that we typically see from Colin DeGalbo. I think that's only his second rush. That sounds about right, yeah. Third and two for the Vulcan. So set up third and two now for California. I think they're going to either look back to do those short crossing routes or quick slants. Cox to the Cohen. Right to the left. Was off ball. Now he's on ball. Handoff goes to Brown, and Brown is stuffed immediately. Only pickup of one. He's going to set up fourth and one at Kutztown 46. This is almost the same exact situation that we had earlier. So they get a a quick stop on third down. Uh, Now it's fourth and one. So we'll see if they actually go for it this time. It'll be interesting to see what the play design is here. So we have Mitchell, he's in shotgun, Brown to his left, you have two receivers to the far side, one to the near side, takes a snap, handoff goes to Brown, and Brown is stuffed at the line, turnover on downs, it's going to Kutztown. I don't know why they thought that was going to work. They just did that same exact play, the play before that, and they got stuffed. That is great stand there by the Kutztown defense. Really good. Cal U, we've been saying the only thing that's working for them is the pass. And usually you have to start with the rush to open up the pass so you can do the play action. But in this case, all of their runs aren't working. The first quarter, it was uh, towards the end zone. They were able to get a couple things done with a couple good jukes by the running back. But in the past couple downs, past couple drives, just absolutely nothing except those passes. So Kutztown's going to start here at their own 46-yard line. Colin DeGalbo, he's got Reynolds to his left. He's going to take the snap. Handoff goes to Reynolds. Reynolds makes a man miss. 
but he will only pick up about one on the play. So he'll set up second and nine, the Kutztown 47. Boy, I cannot emphasize uh, how big that stop on fourth down was for that defense. That was huge. That's two in a row now. That was, and that was a collective tackle there by it seemed to be the entire Kutztown line. So, you now have DeGalbo. Shotgun takes the snap. He's looking. He's rushed out of the pocket. Throw goes to Reynolds. Reynolds breaks the tackle. He's going to get to about the 50. They're going to mark him down just short at the 49 in Kutztown territory. Kutztown's tight end, Pilkerton there, number 42, wide open on a crossing route right across the quarterback side. Unfortunately, DeGalbo not able to see it, and he has to go to his checkdown option. But DeGalbo with a good job there of extending the play and making sure he breaks the tackle so he doesn't get sacked. Behind good, the line of good pass rush there by California. Uh, still no so, sacks in this game. Still no sacks, though. So set up third and seven now for Kutztown. You have Reynolds to DeGalbo's left. He'll take the snap. He's looking. He fires over the middle. It's oh. caught. It's tipped and caught. It's at the 40, the 35, the 30, the 20, the 15, and he's pushed out of bounds at the 15-yard line. My goodness. And we're we're up in the box, the press box, and next to us we have both uh, either offensive <laughs> coordinators. And after that play happened, so so what happened is um, California Pierre able to tip the ball, but it's caught anyway for Kutztown for a huge gain. And I heard the offensive coordinator next to us uh, jump up and stomp on the ground, <laughs> clearly upset, which um, I would be too. Amadu Barry with the catch, ball is tipped and right into his hands for the huge gain. So we're gonna have to play here, Degalo. Takes a snap. He's going to take it himself. He's at the 10, and he's brought down at about the 9-yard line. They'll mark him. That was an exciting last two plays. My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, uh, Kutztown's able to capitalize and score a touchdown here. So yep. I haven't had that big turnover yet either. Deep, yep, very deep in California territory. It's second and four now. Ball's on the 9-yard line. We have 5.05 left here in the third quarter. So they look over to the sideline to get their instruction. You have Reynolds to his right, Pilkleton lined up on the line, two receivers to the far side. Handoff goes to Reynolds. Reynolds makes a man miss. He's tackled just short at the one-yard line. Offensive line there doing a good job to get a hole right up the middle. Easy for Reynolds to see. He just blows by. Great push there by the Kutztown O-line. First and goal at the one. Let's see what Kutztown has up their sleeve. Going quick. Going quick, keeping that tempo up. Snap goes to DeGalbo. Dalbo's going to keep it himself. He's at the foul on and he's short. He definitely went for it. He didn't. He, he, oh, man. He had the ball in his right hand. He had so the ball in his right hand, yeah. it out. So that, was, that was an option. Handed off to Reynolds, but... Um, the, the crowd certainly shows their displeasure for the call. California PA ready for that one. Caught off Reynolds really quickly, and we're able to get down on DeGalbo, so they had, wasn't able to get that yep, one they yard. They had Reynolds right away. DeGalbo kept it himself. Close, but no cigar. And you don't but, want to risk putting your arm out so uh, the ball true. can get snapped away. So you have second and one. DeGalbo takes a snap. Handoff goes to Reynolds, and Reynolds... Is in for the score. Touchdown, Golden Bears. Craig Reynolds with the score. They're able to punch it in on second and goal from the one. And with that, we are an extra point away from it being a 10-point game. This is the first time Clifton is up by two scores, too. Hopefully they can hold on. Yeah, that's big. I think two possession game now. That's big. Getting that first third down stop started the avalanche, <laughs> which is funny because that's their mascot. Ha, ha. Um, started the avalanche. They were able to stop them the next drive too. So Rosenfeld on for the extra point. Ball snap. Good spot. Good hold. Kick is away, and the kick is good. 94 there on the defense. Almost able to break through, but not quite quick enough. Again, really good by both sides there. You can definitely see the, the halftime adjustments made by Kutztown. It is 34 to 24, 359 left here in the third quarter. Yeah, that halftime team talk must have been it, it, pretty it good. Did something for them, that's for sure. We got two touchdowns and two stops. 
really good job there by the Kutztown offense. Yeah, they had all sorts of options there to play with there. Uh, first and goal from the one. Tried to run with the Galba the first time. Didn't quite work. Uh, went with Reynolds right off the gut. Trust their, their running back. That's his third touchdown of the game. That is his third touchdown of the game. That's now five for him on the season. He could be PSAC Offensive Player of the Week again. Let's just get him some more uh, more touches on offense. He's definitely get him some more rushing captain. yards. All right, so Rosenfeld's going to kick it away. It's a decent kick. It's about the one yard line. It'll be taken out. He's at the ten. Oh, makes a man miss. Fifteen, twenty, brought down at about the twenty-two yard line. They'll mark him. Number one for Kutztown, going for the absolute kill shot there to drop him down at about the ten, but unfortunately uh, misses by a little bit, and the returner is able to block that off, uh, make it back to manageable field position. That was Nazir Taylor on the return. Yard line first and so ten. California will start at about the 22-yard line. It is first and ten, and we'll get to get another look here at the Kutztown defense. I'd like to mention it's a very beautiful day out. It is very nice. It's a very nice change of pace from what we've been having. Uh, so Mitchell in shotgun takes the snap. He's going to fire to the near side, caught by number 14, Dandridge. And they just keep doing the same couple of plays, uh, variations off of their same starting position. And it's either a quick slant off to the left and have one of the wide receivers block or have both the wide receivers block, hand it off to the running back. And it, it keeps working for them. They just haven't been able to capitalize now on third down in these past two tries. So give them six. And oh. ball stripped. And it's picked up by Kutztown. And we hear two stomps next to us again. That was excellent. There's your turnover. <laughs> and here it's on the 25-yard line. This is, again, huge Massive. play. Massive play. They started the run. Uh, one of the... They've got the turnover chain. <laughs> they got the turnover chain. I didn't see who it was, but he was able to penetrate through the line and stuck his arm out. He was able to hit the arm of the running back, and the ball gets loose. Someone else picks it up. It's down. Looking really good in the second half. That was number 53, Bashir Steed there. Really athletic play to just get his hand out there and get enough power on it. Excuse me, that was uh, Dave Calderon, number 93. So Kutztown's offense is going to have great starting field possession here. 24-yard line. So you have Colin DeGalbo. He's in shotgun. Craig Reynolds to his left. Takes the snap. Handoff goes to Reynolds. Reynolds finds a hole. It's going to fall forward to about the 20-yard line. Pickup of about six. Cal P.A. doing a good two, job two, to, about four. to sure up that hole pretty quickly. So he wasn't able to get a huge gain off that one. But it's definitely a good pickup for first down. Now, again, on second down, you can do almost whatever you want because third and five is, is manageable, especially now on the 20-yard line. You could just kick the field goal if you have to. So it'll be second and six now here on the 20-yard line for Kutztown. Ball on the 20-yard line deep in California territory. DeGalbo has Reynolds to his right, two men to the far side. Takes the snap. He's going to take it himself. He's at the 20. He's at the 15, the 10. He's going to slide at the 5-yard line. They'll mark him down at the 6. Great run by DeGalbo. Didn't look like he had too many options there. Made it work yeah. with his feet. He was showing the pass the whole way. Maybe uh, got into the minds of Cal PA. And again, we are in the red zone. And I've noticed a lot of the time, Kutztown won't have a play ready, but they'll go up to the line and they'll do a hard count to see if Cal PA jumps, and then they'll go back and look at their and coach. They'll, to see make, what their they'll play make their audible. So it'll be first down and goal from the six yard line. Seeing what the defensive look is again, audible. Reynolds to DeGalbo's left, takes the snap, handoff goes to Reynolds. Reynolds is met immediately. And no game. And we have a penalty on the play. They haven't had a flag in all of the second half. This is the first one. Yeah, it's been pretty good so far. Unlike the first half. So the clock stops with 155 left in the third quarter. This quarter has gone by really quickly. It has gone by really quickly. I think it's because uh, Kutztown's making good work of the clock so far. Back play. On sports and life conduct. Offense number 46. 15-yard penalty. And we get 
That's kind of the, the hard part about having a whole bunch of momentum. Sure, we've just done a couple of really great things in a row starting the second half, but you really need to cool it. Uh, you can be excited, you can be ready for the play, but don't do any extracurricular activities at the end there. Don't celebrate too extra because you'll get called for uh, unsportsmanlike penalties there. Penalties on Tyler Borg on sportsmanlike conduct. That'll put Kutztown back at the 22-yard line. It's still technically second and goal. Second and goal. They've They're got 22, 22 yards to go. So not an ideal situation. We'll see what Kutztown has in store. That's a big penalty on the team. It is. So to Galbo in shotgun. You have Reynolds to his right. Takes a snap. He's looking. He's going to lob it up to Sullivan, and it is incomplete. Uh, incomplete. Looking for a flag, and doesn't look like he's going to get it. He threw it into double coverage there. He had two men uh, on single coverage up on the top, but maybe trusting uh, his wide receivers more than his tight ends. So that will set up third and 22 now for Kutztown. What's your play here? I guess technically third and goal. So I see in the NFL a lot they just do draw plays. Yeah, that seems to be pretty kind of popular on these third and long kind of plays. I guess it depends on how good your kicker is. We really haven't seen a field goal attempt from him yet, so we're not yeah, sure. Yeah, I haven't quite seen Rosenfeld yet on a on a field goal. We did see an extra point blocked earlier. So Reynolds goes in motion. Galba takes a snap. He's back. He's looking. 11. He's going to fire, and it is caught at the three-yard line. One ref no, one, signaling a catch, one ref signaling one out, of out of bounds. One ref out of bounds. The other saying they're, they're talking it out. It looked like to me that he was pushed out of bounds before he was able to get a foot down. Again, on the other side, I saw two men open. They're going to rule it that oh, we're, gonna, we're still going to talk Having it out. Right now, they, where they have the ball marked down, it looks like they're saying it's a catch. DeGalbo really has to go through his progression more for me. He's got to see the two men on the top, especially number 11, wide open, open for a touchdown. So gonna, all right, so they're going to rule it a catch. So it's going to set up fourth down and about three for their goal. I guess in this case it worked out kind of. It works for now. It works. Do a field goal or going for it? They're going to go for it. They're up by 10. But this could be a dagger if they get it. So Ryan Hubley with the catch there, a very acrobatic catch. So fourth and goal on the three. You have Reynolds to his right. He's going to go in motion to his left. Two receivers to the far side, two to the near side. The Galbo... And they won't get a playoff. We're going to have a timeout. Oh, cuts, down. cuts down. Maybe they were looking to draw, draw them offside at the, at the count again. Definitely going to think about it here. I feel like he'll probably uh, go for the safer option for three points. Because this, this is, again, not automatic with college kickers, but this is definitely very well on the easier side of a field goal. It's an easier side of the field goal. You have to think, though, if they're going to burn a timeout, they're really going to think this one through. Yeah, for sure. And I don't know. They could be drawing up something tricky here. You just got to wonder, is 13 going to be enough? 13-point lead. You could go, you could play it safe, or you could go for the jugular. And Cal PA, I didn't realize this until right now, is right on that cusp, 24 points that I've been talking about a little bit, where Kutztown goes from, I think it was 11-1, and one, if the opposing team scores 24 or less points, to like 10-14 and 14 if they score, score more than 24 points. Obviously, they have a little bit of leeway here, already up by 10, and here another scoring opportunity. And considering that Kutztown scored... Uh, I'm sorry, California scored 24 points in the first half. And none in the third quarter. So and we're, we, I mean, we have one minute left here in the third quarter. You know, great job so far uh, by the Kutztown defense. And good job by the offense, too. So, we've got the offense coming back out. We're going for it on fourth and three. Let's see what we got. We have DeGalbo in shotgun. Reynolds to his left. Two men to the far side, two to the near side. Fourth down and goal from the three. Reynolds takes the, excuse me, DeGalbo takes the snap. He oh. fires and it's incomplete, but we have a penalty. It so we'll tipped see. on the line, it looks like. It did look like it was tipped on the line. He had the receiver open, but not able to get it to him. Looks like they're going to call it against Kutztown. <laughs> yep, pass interference, offense. <laughs> penalty declined. And it will go to California deep in their own territory. I guess that's the benefit of going for it on fourth down. Yeah. Even if you don't get it, they're down on the, on the five, on the ten. So cuts down, unable to score after the ball was stripped on the last drive. I still would have liked to see a field goal there. 
you would have gone with the field goal? What, what that tells me is that they're not super confident about their kicker. Well, or, see, I like the idea of going for the touchdown there because that, that means you really want to put them away. They have the momentum, but maybe they do. you might want to slow that one down and think about it more, which they did. But so right. California starting at his first and ten on their own three. Mitchell in shotgun going to play action. Fires, and it is caught close to the first down marker. He had men open all the way, all around the field. He had his choice. Throws it down the middle for him. Uh, then the first down. Catch is made by Dylan Stallings, the tight end. It'll set up first down for California at the 14-yard line. About 40 seconds left here at the third quarter. So Brown's going to go in motion. Mitchell takes the snap, hands it off to Brown. Brown makes a man miss. He's at the 23-yard line, roughly. Trying to get Brown back involved. I'm sorry, not the 23. He is at the 18-yard line. My mistake. So pick up of about four will be second and six. Taking time to think about this play. Three seconds left on the clock. It looks like they'll just let it run out to the end of the third quarter. Cuts down. Huge quarter for them. 34-24 on top of California University of Pennsylvania. We are going to take a quick break here at KUR, the radio voice of Kutztown University. KUR, the radio voice of Kutztown University and Golden Bears football, is your winning combination this fall. KUR is once again your official radio source for all KU football broadcasts on the road and now brings you audio simulcasts of the KU telecast for home games. Join the Golden Bears' Matt Santos in his 26th season of covering the team and his special guests live from the booth as they bring you every exciting play of the 2017 season. Visit kur.kutztown.edu for broadcast times. That's KU football all season long, all 11 games on KUR, your exclusive radio home for Kutztown. University Golden Bears football. All right, here we're just about back then. All righty, so it is second down and six on the California 18 yard line. Confusion. A little bit of confusion the there. Maybe Sweet. Just, oh, ah, the dance team. They got the cheerleaders, cheerleaders still, on, still the field. on the field. Yep. <laughs> got to get the cheerleaders off the field. Thank you. All right. So started the fourth quarter here now. Could stand up 34 to 24. Mitchell's going to take the snap. Fires it over to the near side. Caught. At the 25, tackled. They're going to mark him down at about the at 27. That is over to Jordan there. Dandridge. Give him the first down. Going to keep the tempo up here for California. And Mitchell takes a snap. He's looking. He fires over the middle. It is caught at the 40, or excuse me, the 40. Brought down at about the 43-yard line and over it, to Tyson Hill. It's still just those passing plays for Cal, PA. They only have a total of 56 rushing yards so far, and that's off of over 20 carries. Kind of, kind of going back to what worked for them in the first half. So, Mitchell... In shotgun, he's got Brown to his left. Got two receivers to the far side, two to the near side. He's going to take the snap. He's looking. It's going to be a screen. Brown breaks the tackle. He's at the 45. He's at the 50. He's at the 45, the 40. Still not brought down. He'll be tackled around the 35-yard line in Kutztown territory. They'll mark him down at the 36. It'll be another first down. For Kutztown, it was a screen play there. 47, Luke Snyder on the Golden Bears defense with a really good opportunity there, a really good chance to get the tackle early on. He's getting blocked off by two men as everyone else rushing towards the quarterback on the screen play, almost able to get the tackle. 
like two yards past the line of scrimmage, but fortunately this one goes long. First and ten in Kutztown territory at the 36. Mitchell takes a snap. He's looking. He's going to step up in the pocket. He's going to take it himself. He's at the 30. He's at the 25, the 20. Front down, close to the 15. They'll mark him down at about the 17, it looks like. They are now in the red zone. Another first down, California driving. I think Kutztown might have been a little scared there to go into the quarterback. I was thinking the whole way he was going to slide at the end because that's what he's done in his first two rushes. But this time, sticks up the entire way through and able to get a couple extra yards. So it'll be first down and 10 ball now at the 17-yard line. Good drive here so far by California. Mitchell in the shotgun. He's got Brown to his left, three receivers to the near side. He's looking. He's running now, and he's tackled at about the 16-yard line. And he had the check down option there, number nine, wide open, but not able to get through the progression to look all the way over there. And again, hearing the offensive coordinator next to us, very upset. He's probably going to relay that information <laughs> down. Get through your progression. Good sound. Good job on the pass rush. Uh, it'll be second and ten now for California. But no, I think you're. I think you're exactly right. Um, didn't quite uh, get through his progression. Kutztown did a very good job of bringing pressure up front. So it'll be second and ten now. The 17. Mitchell is going to take the snap. He's looking. It's caught by Tyson uh, Hill. Over at the five-yard line, it'll set up a first down and goal for California. That was a well-thrown ball. Very fast, and just getting it past uh, one of the Golden Bears who was going up for the tip. So we'll mark it down at the four. The key four downs right here. See what Kutztown can do here on the goal line. First and goal at the four. Mitchell, he's got Brown to his right. Takes a snap. Handoff goes to Brown. Brown makes the man miss, and he's brought down at the two-yard line. It'll be a pickup of about two, set up second and goal. This is hard territory here on the two-yard line because you definitely want to run. But kutztown has been so good on this rush defense, especially, again, in the second half. They've really been able to shut it down. Um, they were able to pick up two, three yards on that one. Uh, they need two, three yards more. So... We Maybe have, looking to do another rush. I was going to say, we have already seen a fade route by California. And that clearly didn't work. So we're going to have Mitchell in shotgun. He's got Brown to his left. Takes the snap. Has to Brown. Brown gets into the end zone for the score. little extracurricular activity going on there at the end of the play. But Nelson Brown with the touchdown is going to make it 34-30, pending the extra point. Now we're back to a one-score lead. So we'll have Brian Alserbrooks on for the extra point. He'll take the snap. Good spot, good hold. Kick it away, and the kick is good. So that'll make it 34-31. 10.56 left here in the fourth quarter left in the game um you know a little disappointing there for the Kutztown defense two really good uh drives in the third quarter Mm -hmm. California just kind of had their way with them there that last quarter so a little disappointing to see uh we'll see Kutztown uh the offense back out so I guess Looking back a little bit, you go back to that uh, fourth and three. And, you know, Kutztown electing to try and go for the touchdown as opposed, as opposed to taking the field goal. Uh, Come back to Hanum a little bit. The See, the if they Monday, kick the field goal, they make the field goal. Say they make the field goal. It's 37-31, okay? Uh, say California scores a touchdown. Uh, kick is blocked on the extra point. It's all tied up. Now it's 34-31, field goal territory. So we'll see. Well, we'd still be up 37-31, yeah. We'd be up by six. We got that Well, I'm just goal. saying if uh, California were to score a touchdown. Yeah, true. So kick is away by Ulster Brooks, fielded by Reynolds. At about the 10, he's at the 15, the 20. 
25-30. 35-40, and brought down by the kicker at the 43-yard line. Great return there by Craig Reynolds. Really exciting stuff there. Whoa, and we got the a play. penalty. At least this one's after the play. They're not going to bring it all the way back. They're just going to march him back 15 yards. We have still, a you, penalty. You, you can't do that, especially now only up by one score in the fourth quarter. You can't do these extra things. Come, They're going to come back to bite you. Um, I'd like to highlight something that happened in the third quarter. Reynolds was able There's to get... No flag after the play. Ooh. There's no flag after the play. No there, flag. See, okay, and I didn't want to say it before mm-hmm. the penalty. They're going to call it no penalty uh, on the play, but that definitely looked like a flop. <laughs> it looked like it looked like a massive flop. Maybe that's what they decided on. And I think that's what the, the call was uh, because he went down way too easy. So, uh, But going back <laughs> to what I was saying, yeah. Reynolds was able to get 68 yards by that third quarter, and that makes him the 13th player in school history to run for 2,000 yards in his career. So big congratulations to Craig Reynolds. So we have play... DeGalbo makes the play, takes it himself. The flag. Might we be have going a flag on the play. I definitely saw some shirt DeGalbo pulling. <laughs> Crowd doesn't like it. Flag Crowd's starting play. to boo the refs a little bit. I Cuts definitely saw some back. shirt pulling. Kutztown already knows they're marching back. It was a good run there by DeGalbo. Offense, number 71. Holding on one. number 71 for Kutztown. That's Matt Sella. The center. Yep, the center. It looked pretty unnecessary for me, too, because the gavel just breaks one tackle at the beginning after doing, like, the fake option. Well, it's disappointing um, that kind of negates the, yeah. the the run there because it was a good run. It's going to set up first and 20 now. And that hurts him a lot, too. Off of a really good kickoff return, now you're back on the 33, but you're on first and 20. So it'll be second and 20 now. Excuse me. It should be first and 20 at the 33. So the Gabo takes the snap. And off to Nablet, and he's wrapped up immediately for no gain. Now it'll be a second and 20. No gain on the play. So Reynolds comes off the field. Nablet will stay on. Calpier not, not faked out by that one at all. No, they were not. So Colin DeGalbo in shotgun. He's got Nablet to his right, takes a snap. He's looking. He's going to Wide fire open. at the 35 to the 40. The 45, the 50, into California territory, marked down at the 49-yard line. That's Pilkerton again. I That's keep seeing him 42, get open. Jack Pilkerton. I keep seeing him get open, and he's had a really good game today. He has the, had a pretty good game today. He's also had a few a few chances where he's been wide open, and DeGabo just hasn't been able to get it to him. But this time, able to get him, getting subbed out off of a good play. Pilkerton, at the end of the third quarter, had two receptions for 32 yards. Gets a nice pickup there, puts it to town. About pick up about 18. It'll be third and two now. So DeGalbo is going to take the snap. He's going to try and take it himself. Calpier, right there. That did not work. I think that's a rehash of a couple of the yep. a couple of plays that they've done already. DeGalbo brought that back down all the way. Cuts down to a 45-yard line. Tackle was made by number 30 for California. Number 30, Ashid Page Jones. So, Coach now will bring on the punting unit. We will see Dean Krisich. Got the returner at the 15. Let's see if he gets that far. Ball is punted away. It's a nope. decent punt. And it's going to take a Coach Town friendly roll inside the 20 to the 15. Yeah, it looked like that, that went off of one of the Coach Town's uh, cleats. And so it bounced all the way back. I think one ref uh, saw that and threw his flag, or not his flag, like his hat, all the way up. Yep. So. Oh, yeah. That's a little unfortunate. Right. Well seen by that ref, though. That's true. See, as opposed to it being down at the 18-yard line, they're oh, going to yeah, mark it down 33. at the 33. Yep. Not a good punt. 22 yards there for Krisich. And again, Cal PA not bringing any pressure on those at all. They got like two guys rushing for it. We haven't seen electrifying punts today, to say true. the least. It's true. So Mitchell in shotgun takes a snap. He's looking. Another screen to Brown. Brown at the 35, the 40. The 45 
Brought down at about the 50. That's where they'll mark him at. Does well to make one man miss there and is able to get quite a few yards running up the field with his blockers up in front of him. Catches cuts down off guard with the screen. Now they're all the way at the 50. It'll be first down and 10 from the 50-yard line. So you have Mitchell, shotgun. They're going to look over to the sideline. 10 seconds on the play clock. You have number 26, Nick Grissom in at running back now. Mitchell takes the snap. He's looking. He's going, going well. deep down the far side. It is dropped. Oh, oh my goodness. Tyson Hill right through his hands. Would have had that. it at about the 10-yard line. That's never as or never as on uh, on the defense there on the coverage, and didn't look like he was prepared for a long run there. He looked like he was he was biting early, even though no moves made at all. Uh, just not able to catch up to the wide receiver. Luckily for him, uh, it's a drop. Coach now kind of catches a little bit of a break there. It's second and ten now. Mitchell in the shotgun. Grissom to his left. Handoff goes to Grissom. Grissom. We'll get to about the 45. They'll mark him down at the 47. Not much space to run on that one. No, it is not. It'll be third and seven. Good job there by the Kutztown defense. We'll see if Kutztown can go back to their early second half defense on third down. So Nelson Brown will check it back into the game. Mitchell. We got seven minutes left. If they don't get this, this could be fourth down territory, especially with this field position. 7.20 7.20 left in the game. Mitchell in shotgun. He's got Brown to his right. Takes a snap. He's looking. He's brought down for a second. Holy They're going to call a penalty. Brought back down at about the it's 44. Flag on the offense, so they're keeping that sack. Huge tackle. Holding against the offense. That's the first Great sack of the job. game. That is the first sack of the game. Definitely, one of our keys to the game. Definitely not as good as getting seven, but that one's pretty key. Back them up much. You definitely can't go for it on fourth down here with seven minutes left. Just down by one score. That so, is a huge sack there four, by Kutztown. They uh, threw a hold. That's Adam, Adam Crowther on the, the sack. So, we will see Tristan Williams on the punt. And oh. uh-oh, he muffed it. He nope, he's gonna kick it away. Ball's gonna take a bounce at about that the was, twenty. That was easily his best punt. Kutztown <laughs> did a really good job to get a bunch of pressure going towards him, and the punter really afraid that he was gonna get tackled right away. Uh, takes the ball back into his body, scrolls off to the right before, uh, before he can get tackled, and gets the punt away and is able to get a pretty good kick. Kind of had to run out to the right a little bit there. That could have been huge, though. If that could have been gets, huge. If Kutztown gets the tackle, they're down on the 35-yard line. They only have 35 yards to go. But Instead, they'll be starting deep in their own territory. Ball's on their own 12-yard line. Here now they have a little bit more of an opportunity to waste the clock a little bit more uh, if they so choose. It's going to set up first and 10 now for Kutztown. 6.49 left in the game. The Galbo in the pistol. He's got Reynolds behind him. Play action to Reynolds. He's going to run out to the right, and he is met immediately in the backfield. That is a Statue of Liberty play there. A little bit. Interesting play design. Um, Kutztown loses. See, they're brought back to about the seven. They'll lose about five on the play. They'll set up about second and 15. I think they're definitely going to be looking to do lots of run plays here with six and a half minutes left, up by a score. Um, But I really feel like it's more important to get first downs than to get the runs in. I'll say second and 14 ball on the eight. So DeGalbo takes the snap. He's looking. He fires, and it is dropped mm. by Barry. Really great coverage there by number three for the defense. Pass incomplete. Pass Spot. is incomplete. Spot with Barry the whole way through. DeGalbo throwing that pass really early before Barry's even turning his back, back to the ball. But Barry does a good job to see it. Get it into his hands, just unfortunately, defense able to break it away. Good coverage there by Brandon Edwards. Problem is, clock stops at 6 11. It's three, or excuse me, third and 14 now. The disaster of the uh, first two downs. Colin DeGalbo in shotgun. He's got Craig Reynolds to his left. Two receivers to the far side, two to the near side. He's going to throw it to Barry at the eight. Barry makes a man miss at the 10. He's going to be tackled at about the 15. 
and just giving their punter a little bit more room there. So, with that, it's going to set up fourth down. Clock continuing to go. So we got out on the 16-yard line. We got to go back to that Cal U punter play, and he's been pretty bad the whole game. He's had two punts before that last one, and probably an average of like 15 yards. Just on a they punt. had that one pet, uh, punt that maybe netted two yards. But but that last one does a really athletic play to not. Oh, there's the punt. So Kutztown gets the punt away, takes a bounce at the 46, and he's met immediately at Again, the 50-yard line. Not calling for a fair catch, so destroyed. But back to what I was saying about the punter. Yes. Changing from Kutztown getting the ball at the 35 to Kutztown getting the ball at the other side, 20, and then good three-and-out stop by the defense, and now the Vulcans have an opportunity at the 49-yard line. And D'Angelo Mitchell with the return. So, California down by three, 528 left here in the fourth quarter. This one's going to be a big decider in this game. They are on their own 49-yard line. Excellent field uh, field position here. So, we'll have Noah Mitchell in shotgun. He's got Nelson Brown to his left. Ball snapped. Handoff goes to Nelson. Nelson needs out the 50 to 45. Brought down at about the 42-yard line. He has number 20, Chris Thomas, with a really nice open field tackle one-on-one with um, the running back, who we've been complimenting a lot, or at least I have, about going the extra mile, keeping his feet moving, doing a couple of jukes, but that that was a huge tackle there to make the second and two instead of, like, a 15-yard gain. Oh, we got another injury on the field. We've got an injury timeout right now. That is Nelson Brown at the end of the play being looked at. He'll have to come off the field for at least a play. He tried walking off under his own power. Uh, they're having the trainers take a look at him right now. 34, 31, 520 left here in the fourth quarter, and he's walking off under his own power. It's been a really good game to call so far. It's been fun. This has been fun. I was a little worried that it's going to be a blowout in one direction or maybe just a lot of punts, but no, not not the we case. Got, we got a nice close game to call here. This happy, is fun. Happy to be here to call it with you. Happy to be here too, Kevin. <laughs> All right, so... We have second down and one ball is on the 42-yard line in Kutztown territory. Mitchell is in the shotgun. Handoff goes to the running back, and he is stuffed in the backfield. Pickup of no gain will actually lose a yard. That is number 26 on the carry. It looked like he tried to do an athletic play at the end there to extend. And uh, really dive his whole body out there and extend the ball, but unfortunately for him, knee down before that happened. So getting lots of two. Nick Grissom on that last carry. He's going to set up third and three here for California. Ball is on Kutztown's 44-yard line. This is a big play for the Kutztown defense. They are set up in a 3-4 defense. Mitchell takes the snap. He's looking. He fires and it oh, drops. Wow. Dropped by Tyson Hill. Tried to get him on the quick slant. And he was looking at Tyson Hill the entire way there. The entire he way. Got the snap, looked up, looked immediately to him, and it's just a little quick quick slant to the right off of the left sideline. Uh, unfortunately for the Vulcan, the drop. Would have had the first down. Instead, it is fourth and three, and California's going for it. The crowd is really pumped up. Cuts down, back into 3-4. Crowd getting into it now. Mitchell in shotgun. He's got Grissom to his left. Ball snap. He's looking. He fires, and it is incomplete. Too high. Too high. Pass went over to number 80, Chad Livingston. Looked like the Vulcan sideline was looking for a call, and the ref was having Just none of that. would not make the call. That is a huge play for this Kutztown defense. I don't like going for it on fourth down there. Even on the think 50. Too much, think too much time left? I think there's too much time left, especially with uh, three timeouts. So especially be- your defense has just stopped Kutztown twice in Correct. a row. Correct. Although it could end up working for them. If Kutztown doesn't get this and gets no points, they'll have the last opportunity with 
only a little bit of time left, and they can extend the play uh, and run out the clock and then score in the end. 424 left here in the fourth quarter. Ball's handed off to Reynolds. Reynolds will get tackled at the 49-yard line into California territory. That's a really great first first down run. Opens up all the possibilities for second down. Allows the clock to keep moving. Second and three. Second and three. Clock moving. Manageable. Second and three now for the Golden Bears. The Galbo in shotgun. He's got Reynolds to his right, two receivers to the far side, one to the near side. I think they're just going to run it again. They want to waste this clock. You have a man in motion. That's Sullivan. Ball snapped. Handoff goes to Reynolds. Reynolds. Makes a man miss. He's going to get to about the 45-yard line. They're going to give him the first down. It's a big first down there for Coast Town. 340 now on the clock. So doing all these running plays is something that my dad likes to call playing not to lose. That sounds about right. <laughs> and just trying to waste out the clock. And I'm kind of okay with that. My dad definitely doesn't like it a lot. But <laughs> I feel like there are definitely some opportunities to use it. But I feel like if you're using it, you got to let the – um, the play clock wind down more. On that last play, they snapped the ball with 10 seconds left. Here, now they're taking a little bit more. It's already down to 8, 7, 6. Um, so now they're getting the clock wind down. But on the last one, they wasted 10 seconds. So the guy that takes the snap. Handoff goes to Reynolds. Reynolds to the outside. He'll get past the 45 to about the 43-yard line in California territory. Pickup of about two. It'll set up second and eight. California has got to be really careful here to not get any flags thrown on them for any extra tackles at the end. So they got to be very sure that they're tackling in the correct way and not doing anything afterwards. So DeGalvo in shotgun. He's got Reynolds to his left. Two receivers to the far side, one to the near side. They're here looking over. Wasting the clock. Yep, wasting the clock, looking over to the sideline, getting some direction. Two and a half left. Two and a half minutes left here in the fourth quarter. 34 to 31. Cuts down on top. Hand off to Reynolds. Reynolds to the 40. Brought down. That's where they'll mark him. They'll mark him down at the 40. Just stopped by one one big hand. There's someone on the Vulcans. Here's a timeout for the Vulcans. We've got a timeout got two left. by California. Two timeouts left for them. That was a big stop. That, that definitely could have been another first round uh, or first <laughs> Could have been another first down first off down, of that yep. run. That's okay. what I was going for. Um, but the big the big paw, I would say, stops him in his tracks. So that's going to set up uh, third and five for Kutztown. 34-31, 2.19 left here in the fourth quarter. Kind of coming right down to it. Um, this is a big play for Kutztown. The second half has really blown by. It really has. It really Not has. too many flags. It's been uh, a pretty clean lots of game. scoring. Do we uh, do we have a ruling on how many penalties we've had? It's definitely got to be more than eight and a half. You, you think more than? Okay, that sounds about right. I feel like right. I definitely won. <laughs> I don't have a stat sheet for that. Though, I was getting, we should have counted, honestly. I don't know why we forgot pens. I think they probably had some here in the the booth for us. It but might be fine. on here somewhere. Yeah, I can't find it. We'll look I'm just, just going to say I won because I definitely did. Easy. Oh, there are the penalties. Yep. Okay. <laughs> At the end of halftime, it was ten, so I think you won. <laughs> Uh, the end of the third quarter, it was 13. So, all right. So, third and five. Galbo takes a snap. He's looking. Fires oh, over Sullivan. Oh, another drop. Sullivan takes a big hit, drops the ball. Incomplete. He dropped the ball uh, right before he got hit, and then he got laid out. So, that can't feel good for him. Throw was a little behind him. Yeah. So, 2.15 on the clock. You're going to have to bring out the punt unit. It's going to give California. a punt. On the 40-yard line, you definitely don't want to kick it too hard. You don't want to give them the ball on the 25. This is going to be interesting here. This is huge. So California is going to get at least at least one more drive. And you didn't make California waste any time or uh, any timeouts there on the last one. So the ball's punted. It'll take a friendly touchdown bounce. It's a really excellent punt. Really great punt. It'll roll all the way to the two-yard line. Deep in California territory. 2.05 now on the clock. That was more of a line drive, and it was able to get the ball bouncing. Luckily took a Kutztown bounce, kept going, and then Kutztown on top of it to down the ball before it got into the end zone. So we've already seen California go 97 yards uh, for a score. They've got to do it again. They're going to have to do it again. They've got a long way to go with two minutes left. 
This is going to be fun. But yeah, they got two timeouts left. Again, They'll have two timeouts. If, if Kutztown had done a running play on our last one instead of going for the first down, which I feel like you go for the first down there personally, but then that leaves the Vulcans with one timeout and a lot less time, especially now on the three-yard line. But you don't know what's going to happen. So. so Nelson Brown enters back into the game after leaving with an injury. Yeah, Mitchell in shotgun. Brown to his left. Mitchell takes a snap. He's going to take off a run, and he's met immediately. He'll fall forward for about a pickup of two. He's going to set up second and eight on the five-yard line. I want to throw it back to a stat that I said earlier. KU is 14-2 and two while holding its opponent to less than 100 yards rushing. They're They've def- been very good on the run defense so far today. That's California sure. PA is definitely going to be passing it throughout the rest of the game. I think they're going to meet that. Hopefully it goes to 15-2. and two. Mitchell and Shotgun takes a snap. He's looking to the near side and is caught at about the 16-yard line over to Jordan Dandridge. It's going to move the chains, pick up a first down. Minute 30, they are going to keep the tempo up here. Clock keeps going. Mitchell in the shotgun, takes the snap. He's looking. He fires deep over the middle, and it is picked off. It is picked off by touchdown. Picked off number Number five, five, Jake Perry. He's had a great game. What a play by the safety. Game's not over yet, though. Two timeouts. They'll have another chance. The red, shirt, the red shirt senior comes up big with the interception. Bring out the turnover chain yet again. Wow, what a play. We've got another fun stat for you. Kutztown is 1-0 and for the first time since 2012. Do you want to know the last time they were 2-0? and Let's hear it. 2011. And nice. So just the year before that. But <laughs> the last time that they did that, they ended up winning the first PSAC championship. There you this go. This definitely isn't 2 0 yet. This, isn't, this game is definitely not won. We've got a minute. Touchdown definitely has to finish it out. Minute 18. Ball on the so 40 yard line in California territory. Handoff goes to Reynolds. Reynolds brought down almost immediately. Pickup of about three. Get it to the 37 yard line. And we're going to have a timeout by California. First down ends the game. Pretty much, yeah. If Coach Tech can get that first, if they can get the first down, ends the ball game. Oh boy, this is a really good first game to call. It has been fun. It's been good calling it with you, Kevin. Got is that two turnovers now. That's now two turnovers. Yep, we had the the fumble earlier. We had the interception there by Perry. Both four good down. They've done a great job of not turning the ball over today. Cuts down. Zero turnovers for him. The Galvos looked really good. Um, I don't know. If you had to give a player of the game, who are you thinking? Uh, my first thought is the Galvo, especially because of that first half. I feel like without that leadership from him and the way he was playing, we, uh, we definitely are at a bigger deficit. And I mean, the second half, it's, it's kind of been all over the place, plays by everyone. I mean, he's over 300 yards of total offense alone just by himself, passing and rushing. And so he's he, got two touchdowns. So he has to Galbo. Handoff goes to Reynolds. Reynolds gets to the outside, makes a man miss. He falls forward to the 35-yard line. Thank Reynolds is definitely the other guy two. on the short list with three touchdowns Reynolds already. has been good today. All right, so California is going to burn their final timeout. Sets up third and five on the 35-yard line. Got a minute four left here. This is... You know, we say it a lot, but this is a really big play here. First down completely ends the game. If they don't get the first down, I feel like they got to let the clock expire, get the five-yard penalty, move it back a little bit, and California PA would be left with about 20 seconds so after the punt is over If with no timeouts. If Kutztown doesn't get the first down here, you have to think the play itself is going to take at least four seconds. California probably could get the ball with about 20 seconds left. Yep. Not counting the punt. Yep. Um, so anywhere in the range of 15 to 20 seconds uh, left for their offense. Say if Kutztown does not get the, the first, down. first down here. Yep. So to Galbo, he's in shotgun. He's got Reynolds to his left. Two receivers to the far side. This is just me personally. I would not be throwing here. <laughs> Never. So Reynolds goes in motion. DeGalbo's going to take it himself. I love, I love this play. 
Jeff's taking himself out. He's got to get the first down. And slides at the end there. Past the 30. That's going to be the game. That was, is your ball game. I was thinking the Gallo was keeping it. That's what I wanted to see. And they had three guys lined up towards the top of the field looking like they were going to uh, as wide receivers. And I understand California PA has to cover them at least a little bit, but they had four guys covering three guys. Uh, with this much time left, I don't really understand that call. You know that Kutztown's going to be running to run out the, run out the game. But. Kutztown is going to line up in victory formation. 33 seconds left. They'll kneel it. And, ladies and gentlemen, that is your ball game. 34-31. Kutztown gets the win over California. What a game. First time since 2011 they start 2-0. 2-0 and and now for Kutztown. California drops to 0-2. I think, uh, I think after that first game, too, I read a stat where this was the first time since 2011 that Kutztown had gotten votes to be in the PSAC uh, standings. So I feel like after this game, too, even if you're playing an 0-1 team and win narrowly, and California, California is no pushover team either. Maybe, so, maybe we'll see more votes after this game. We're going to give a quick thanks to a lot of people that made this happen. I want to thank uh, Mike Regensberger uh, for... Mm-hmm. Uh, all that he's done. Emily Schlegel, who's back running the board right now. We want to thank her. Uh, Brian Salvador for everything he's done. Uh, everybody up in the booth here. Uh, Kevin, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. It, has been, it has been fun. We're going to take a quick break. <laughs> we'll be back. Uh, Kutztown gets the win, 34-31. We'll do a quick wrap-up, and that will be all. Here on the radio voice of Kutztown University, KUR. KU football fans, did you know that all purchases made at the KU Campus Store benefit KU students? The Campus Store is a division of the nonprofit affiliate of Kutztown University, KUSSI. Surplus from KUSSI's operations is given back to students in the form of scholarships, student activities, and campus athletics. From competitive textbook options to KU apparel and gifts, KU Campus Store is your source for everything KU. Avalanche, Kutztown University's very own mascot, is available to appear at your event. Whether it's a birthday party, grand opening, or town parade, inviting Avalanche will add in extra fun and entertainment for people of all ages. Also, kids can join Avalanche's Golden Bear Cub Club, which allows them to become junior members of the KU team. Make everyone's experience golden by visiting kutztown.edu slash avalanche. Once again, that's kutztown.edu slash avalanche. All righty, everybody, welcome back. Kutztown, 34, University, uh, or excuse me, California, University of Pennsylvania, 31. Kutztown gets the huge win today. Um, there's there's a lot to, to go over. This was this was a fun game, uh, especially because we won. That, that certainly <laughs> helps. Uh, but I thought Kutztown... The second half adjustments that they made in this game were phenomenal. They yeah, only gave, sure. after giving up 24 points in the first half, only gave up seven. And that's the opposite of their last game, too, where they started out really strong, and then towards the middle they kind of stumbled and gave the other team an opportunity, assumption at that point, to come back and get into the game. This game, they didn't really give any big opportunities, especially towards the middle of the game in the third quarter. Yeah, so like we said earlier, uh, really big game from Collins Galbo. Uh, Craig Reynolds also having a big day. Um, the rush defense. Rush defense. Oh, man. Rush defense was huge for Kutztown today. Uh, Nelson Brown is not a, uh, an easy back to bring down. As you kind of saw, he's a big back, kind of shifty. Uh, and Kutztown, I thought, did a tremendous job of containing him today. And they also did a good job of containing uh, Noah Mitchell, who showed that he can get done with his legs, yep. but never really broke anything off that was too explosive. I think he yep. had one big run. Uh, but even then, not much from him. I feel like that was more off of necessity, too. He only had one run in the first half, and he ended with the slide. But towards the second half, when they started get, getting behind, he kind of took it more by himself, did a couple more runs, and, and went all the way through. No slides. But in the end, it wasn't enough for him. In the end, Kutztown comes away with the win. Uh the team leaves the field, and we get to play our alma mater. It's always fun. Um, so any 
any other takeaways from the game, you know, things that you really liked, uh, things that, you know, maybe Coach Stan needs to improve on for next week? Well, um, plus two turnover margin, but both of the things yep. happened in the second half, so I'd like to see more of that in the first half, too. Uh, we only had one sack uh, coming off of a game where we had seven sacks, although um, Cal had zero sacks in their game that they lost in last week, so maybe this is just a hard team to get the quarterback on the ground. So maybe one uh, enough, but next game I'd like to see more anyway, uh, especially coming off of a game with seven. Um, maybe maybe a little bit more fl- full, full-fledged uh, offense and defense throughout the entire game. So in the first game, uh, they were strong at the beginning and then kind of weak towards the middle and end, and then just barely managed it out at the end. Or in this game, they were a little weak at the beginning uh, and then came back in the second half and finished strong. So I'd like if they could start strong and then finish strong, uh, which is a combo we haven't seen yet. So more player, or, or more or less play more consistent game yes. all the way through. I, I agree. Um, oh, I, this was more exciting. This was this was very exciting. <laughs> uh, nobody's going to complain about 2-0. Um, exactly. I, I, I have to agree with you. Uh, the sacks, uh, only one. It was a very big one that they got, uh, but the pass rush wasn't quite there. California has a very good offensive line, and we kind of saw that a little bit today. Um, so I think for next game, yeah, if, uh, if Kutztown can generate a little more pressure, uh, for, well, here's what they have going for the rest of September. Uh, Saturday the 15th, that's next Saturday, uh, at Gannon. That is a 12 p.m. start. Saturday the 22nd is a bye week for them. And then Saturday the 29th, here against... Bloomsburg. That is a 6:05 start. That's going to be a fun one. We got I the agree. night game next time. We're night on. game. I really wonder how all the other teams around PSAC did this week too. So, and then California, um, what they have for the rest of this month, Saturday the 15th next week, they are at Shippensburg. That's a 1 p.m. start. Saturday the 22nd, they're home against Edinburgh. That is also a 1 p.m. start. Saturday the 29th, they are home against Indiana IUP. That is 6 p.m. start. So, that is what each team has coming up for the rest of this month. It's going to be rough for the Vulcans. Starting 0 2. That's hard to come back from. Yeah, it's it's tough to come back uh, from that one starting in the starting the season 0 and 2. Starting in the gutters. Yep. So, with that uh, they were already uh, sitting behind Edinburgh, IUP, and Slippery Rock, who all started 1-0. and uh, They were sitting fourth uh, uh, with Clarion, Gannon, Mercyhurst, and Seton Hill. Um, so they'll look to try and turn turn the tide a little bit next week. Uh, as for Kutztown, they'll look to keep the momentum going forward against uh, Gannon in Gannon. And... With that, that's pretty much all we have. I think so. This is all right, ladies first game. gentlemen. Thank you very much for joining us. This has been a fun experience. For we sure. will be joining you, like we said, Saturday the 29th against Bloomsburg. Uh, like I said, you can still catch the Kutztown game through KUTV uh, against Gannon next week. So, with that, I am Connor High. I am Kevin Group. Here on the radio voice of Kutztown KUR. Kutztown gets the win, 34-31 over here at the University, California University. Have a wonderful day, everyone.